game, Pathfinder 2nd Edition. Woo! Uh, we are currently in, like, what, our third uh, episode? Feels like um, 300, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. A Sky King's Mine's Tomb. Uh, uh, which we're, going, we're taking to calling uh, Beneath the Five Kings. So, uh, stay tuned. We're going to give you an exciting ride here. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Hell got, yeah, brother. We've got some uh, note recaps ready to go. Yeah. Last week. There's not a lot of notes from last week, to be fair. We pretty much did one thing. But we did it. Yeah, we did, we did it, it well. We we did the damn thing. Yeah, we killed the shit out of that crab. Um, <laughs> yeah, the crustaceous right. period. We did the, the leeches. We killed the leeches. Yeah, we love the crab. The crabs are friends. The crab did attack the, us. The crab did kind of piss us off because they. I mean, we they did the almost crab. kill, uh, Wakroon. That's true. Nice name for Wakroon. 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 I deserve that. I don't know why, but I deserve it, I'm sure. You deserve all of the things, Austin. Thank you. Forever and always. There's a lot of good things. Yeah, There's a bad. There's a lot of bad, too. So much bad. <laughs> so much bad. Wow. <clears throat> really Just positive, about guys. Balance. <laughs> Made the rain ever, and make ever the sun shine since... brighter, or whatever yeah. bullshit that is. Sure. Uh-huh. Hearing the dupes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, uh, do we want to briefly recap what happened last time? Yeah, so... before the recap, drum roll. Oh, yeah, we need a drum roll. We need Drop. some drops. Yeah. yeah. We need some drums. Someone get on that. Um, quick, start the keyboard. <laughs> um, previously on Beneath the Five Kings Mountains, um, the adventurers went grabbing to rescue the pristine Lady Shimmersnip from Star... Fregellen, a pearl cask um, at his pearl cask farm down at the lowest level of High Helm. But Lady Shermanstep was besieged by a number of leeches, which totally kicked Woke Run's ass. Uh, but our adventurers prevailed and eventually destroyed all of the leeches and found a secret passageway um, within the farm which no one investigated any further because we are not a curious bunch. Now we're on to uh, potentially help out some Octonars, which are basically Ooh. cave mules. Quids. Yeah, we are. But I think we also talked about maybe waiting for the evening, right? What time of the day was it? It was like afternoon. Yeah, we yeah, were trying to wait we, for the I think evening. we still had most of an afternoon, um, and I had mentioned out, yes. off game because uh, I had forgot to mention it during game that I would be interested in doing the language the language tutoring stuff. Yeah, language tutoring thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, no, you had said that. Yeah. 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 I didn't say in game. I messaged it in in the chat just because it was I forgot about it. Yeah. Dope. I think it makes sense to because that's top floor, right, Brendan? All the way up. Yeah. The tutoring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I so that. I think maybe we. Head that and way, while... but like stop and talk to some people on each floor and see if we could find any more side quests. To well, and I was kind of well. thinking at the tutoring while I'm doing the actual tutoring, you guys can be because I'm sure there's like, you know, down the hall, there's an area where y'all could chill and maybe talk to some more people potentially, oh, yeah. or just like just out in the court uh, courtyard where people are walking around type does, of thing so. does anyone else know more than like common and then one <laughs> other like base language uh yes okay because i think i know four languages do... I oh look at mr smarty pants over here <laughs> do we know enough he works in the court man do we know uh, enough about like what we would be doing up there really brendan hurt. to know like what Where languages would be valuable or anything like that I would say that would that could probably be in that guide that you gave us before. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of like, right. well, I mean, like uh, for this specific, um, like quest type thing. I mean, more so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, what um, exactly is it that we're doing? You uh, haven't really. You guys haven't really, you know, like 
done any research on it yet. Okay. You just heard a rumor that like there was people around looking for work kind of a thing. And so it is something that you you all can um, spend a good chunk of time doing if anybody has um, society. Uh, like a society skill. skill. We yeah, live can, in a society. Yeah, you I can like uh, spend some time society. like um okay yeah so any pc that can speak a number of languages um that they're asking uh, for um can earn income using their their diplomacy intimidation or society skill uh, intimidate so people like into something... giving money <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so it's uh it's it's a, but you also would have to go to the academy probably and figure out like what, what they need? kind of tutors that they're looking for but most of the time it's it's only going to be beneficial, right? If you have a couple of languages, because you have to yeah. be helping translate, right? Like it has yeah. to be something that you can yeah. You can, uh, yeah. one language with. to another. Yeah, mm. I've got a plus yeah. zero intelligence, so I know common and dwarven, and that is I all. Also have plus zero intelligence, yeah. so I know common and orcish. Nice. I know common, dwarven, elven, and under common. Sick. So yeah, I mean, I need to look. So I, I think, think that's one of the things that that changed. Um, I think what under common. It's called something different now. Um, it's under. Oh, it's under common, not under common. I don't think so. It's under what? Details. 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 The, but so there's like weapons, defense, gear, spells, pets, and details. And if you you might have not filled it out either, like it wasn't like a yeah. thing that it made you fill out. I did it this last week. I did it last week too. Yeah. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I filled it out on everyone's sheets. Where like under mine details. looks mine looks the same. Yeah, I mean I I had it, so I don't know if you did it or if I did it, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I know common and dwarven. I think everybody here speaks at least two languages. Oh, yeah, I, I think you language. always get at least. I think you get two. Because if my intelligence yeah, it's common, so. and then your like heritage, your yeah. mother tongue, yeah, yeah, or your like, father tongue, just depending. <laughs> awesome. All right. No. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so so that's so that's an option available to you guys. Um, I will say that that's not like some that's not like a not like a one time thing. Like usually that process takes several days. So, like, you could go and find out more about it, um, and then and maybe get started on that project. Um, but then you'd probably have to come back um, another day. Okay. It's not, it's not like you're just doing, yeah, you know, ten hours of tutoring on one day. It's more like you know, like you, they well, they and, might need I mean, you sometimes and call you back. Yeah. And even if even if it is something that we have to kind of revisit, it does. You know, it's it is still a good area for getting information. Even if it's not necessarily me getting that information, the rest of the team could be taking advantage of proximity of other people to get information. That's my thoughts on it. I agree. Yeah, let's head up, get started on that, and gather information as we go, maybe. Going up. We're going On up. a Tuesday. We're not stopping at the Ogdenars. I think we're going to wait for the evening for that, right? Yeah, we're doing this in the afternoon, and then in the evening we'll go to the Ogdenars. You guys keep pushing off my equids. <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I think that was kind of what we decided last night. Definitely getting to the equids this evening, though. Okay. I think. I, think, I, I don't I'm care. I'm holding Whatever. you to it. All right. Hold walk run to it, not Austin. You walk run. God damn it. So I'll say, um, <laughs> yeah, so anybody that wants to, um, when you're going from point to point, you can make a diplomacy check, I think, to gather information. Let's do it. Oh yeah, I'll do that. Let's do it. And specifically, again, just looking for, like, I want to be specific about my diplomacy check, looking for things that would be entertaining for both people who have always lived here and things for people that are new. Mm. I got so, a net 20 I just for roll. I don't want to just roll to roll, you know? I'm looking, that's what I'm looking for. You know what I realized? Was... Yeah, what? I only got 12. We never did an yeah, ice cream conversation. Oh, that's true. Yeah, no oh. banter. 
No That's true. Bit. We completely forgot about that top. We jumped straight in the game. We were so excited to play. We even had one preset from last week. That's, That's true. What we was it? About. What was your greatest fear? I think is what he said. No, no, it was, was going to be can... whatever yours was, Brendan. You said that you had one, and then we did something else instead. Was that? Maybe was? maybe we can revisit well, it at like an hour-ish break mark or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mid-show banter. Mid-show banter. Mid -show banter. Yeah. An intermission. Yeah. yeah. You know. I need an intermission train. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, that's, I mean, it's fine. We can always come back to it later. Um, <laughs> but uh, so is everybody... Uh, you're currently in, was it Stone Breach? You're like kind of in the, the one of the lower levels? Yeah, yeah, the lowest level, yeah. 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 Not the lowest level, but uh, I think you're in Stone Breach, weren't you? I have to look. Uh, the lowest level. Select map. Uh, it just says Blood in the Water. It doesn't say that where we're at. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're in the depth. So you're in the lowest level of uh high helm right, right now so are you, are, you, yeah. are you looking for stuff there or are, is, are certain people like waiting until you get higher up to look for clues i mean what, what are we um i think i would start I down low i because i don't feel like we we haven't done any like we haven't really talked to the the lower level peoples yet i don't think i don't recall yeah, if no, we, we did went but that's here. Fair. We i only got a 12 so well, I'm, I I got might just punch a guy in the face a again 22 Wow. Nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. I would like to find the nearest guard and report to him that we found an illegally built tunnel inside of Tregellen's, you know, farm area. Mm. Yeah, we. Okay. That would Didn't be good to. Uh... Tregellen's fault that the tunnel is there. No, or... it's not I, no he didn't know. About I don't it. think so that's because yeah, the assumption is that that's where the leeches came from, I believe. Yeah. So. I can't. I think from the depths of hell. The that could be too, but that tunnel might lead to the depths of hell. But it was closed up, so that's why we couldn't look into it anymore. So. Uh, I think if if you were, if you go and find a town guard um, and tell him that, he starts cursing and just runs off immediately. Like he's just like, it's like they start ringing the alarm bells and stuff. And they're like, we've got tunnelers, tunnelers. And they're like, they're like going like go go find somebody. It's a huge deal. Huge deal. It's like if there's an arsonist. There you go. In real life. Uh, uh, I'm gonna take this just I a will... second while we're doing this yep. and switch to our character screen, which now has everyone's character and class because I think that's been revealed, right? Before I do this, no one. I mean, I revealed it class. in the first episode, but I haven't like uh... actively said it since then. Class, yeah, no, nothing, know nothing everyone. else. Class. I mean, I don't, I don't mind. I, yeah, I, I, will, uh, I yeah. guess my class has, but not yeah, other I mean, parts. Yeah. All right, I'm switching to the class screen. Ooh, check that out. Everyone's Ooh, got their fancy hell yeah. fonts. Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, I guessed right on all y'all. Cool. Feeling so smart. I just realized how bad you can't really read champion <laughs> on mine. You have to. <laughs> if you do want to change your bit. font at any time, <laughs> let me know. It's an easy, easy I, switch over. I might, I might do that. Yeah. yeah you're good. <laughs> when you sent it, I was like, it's very metal, ah. though, if you're into it. Yeah, right. Like it looks really cool. Like it, I was kind of going for like a dwarven rune yeah. type look, and I like it kind of works. But yeah, it's not easy to read. <laughs> <laughs> I like how in Ingort's uh, font looks like it belongs on Etsy. <laughs> Ingort, I, <That's... laughs> I feel like his thing should rhyme. Like Ingort, the, cl the cleric. <laughs> You can't say cleric. You gotta say. Uh, you probably cleric. Have, like, Gork, the cleric. Gork has like some painted mason jars. Yeah. Like, you, what's that stuff that you know? The all the you mugs will be like, sip, savor. You know what I You get them at like yeah. to do and stuff. It's, Next it's, time I channel healing, I'm like, excluding Huang. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. Wow. Oh, let's see. Out of cont Out of character. Oh, right. He I has said, a sign in the kitchen that says eat. <laughs> eat. <laughs> Sometimes I just want to have something soft <laughs> to hold. I like, it sounds like the Grinch. <laughs> he definitely does. That's um, it, I'm not healing. Exactly. I'm not healing you. <laughs> um, I'm not healing any of you. Did I like we... This is... got a softer side. Sorry. Um, 
So, were we going to be looking for any people on lower levels that had stuff, or...? Yeah, so I'll let you guys kind of tell me what you're looking for. Um, so, Elnat rolled well, and so did Orpheus. Um, <laughs> I, I think Elnat said it first. So, you said you got a 23. So, yes. what specifically are you looking for? You're looking through, like, as you guys are coming up from Stone Breach, there are some, you know, there's some dwarves, not necessarily from, you know, the major clans that live down here. There's probably people down here on, uh, on business, you know, like there's there's guards uh -huh. and, and delvers going out into the tunnels uh, for work. That type it would, of thing. So, I, and, and is that for, because I, I said that I would probably wait for the upper right. levels to start okay. listening. Okay, you want to wait. All right, that's, that's fine. Um, so we will we will hold on yours. El, Elnat would think that the upper level people are more his people, because, you know, he's yeah. kind of a dick like that. Um, <laughs> sure. Um, well, Karun said he was specifically trying to find stuff out, but he didn't roll very well. He only got a 12. Um, what about Orpheus? What kind of uh, people are you looking to talk yeah. to? What are you trying to find out? That's a good question. I, <laughs> I want to learn more about... Oh, I can never say the name of them. The Equids. Oh, oh Ogdenars? I want to learn more about them so I can Earth? help them better. Yeah, so maybe there's, maybe like there's, uh, so as you guys are like kind of coming up from the lower levels, maybe there's like a, uh, a, like a cart being pulled by a couple of Ogdenars coming down, like a merchant guy that's kind of like passing through. And so you take the time and come over there and, and you're like, is it, I used to like, do they have treats or something? And he's like, oh, sure. Like they love apples and carrots. And like, you know, it gives you like a carrot or something to feed them so you can spend some time with them. Um, and in doing so, you what are the names? Him for a while. <laughs> yeah, Brendan. The, the, the horses, uh, the, the Algenar's names? Yeah, that's important. Uh, what, did, what did we decide that they were, uh, like, the super generic names? Um, oh, Dave and Tom. Was it, was it Molly and... It's a Molly and a... Um, Tom? It John? A Molly, Molly and a John. John. Mm. Yeah, so these two just All happen to be named Molly and John. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so Molly and John are, like, happily eating some carrots out of your hands. Uh, and then and the merchant's just kind of talking. And he's just like... Terrible business. Did you hear about this? No. It's like there was a, a young kobold believed he was a hero. Ran off to, to attempt the Black Noon Gauntlet. Some say he hasn't been seen for a couple of days. He's got people up. He's got people in the lower levels looking for him. He's like, I'm sure they'd hand out hefty reward for anyone with information about his whereabouts. All right, good. Right, write good that down. Know. Write that down. Yes. The what? The the. Sorry, Mr. GM. The what gauntlet? Black, Black noon. noon. Black noon. AKA so that's a little midnight. bit of. Well, no. So, oh. so Black Noon is uh, is re in reference specifically to High Helm, because the city is built kind of inside the mountain. Mm. So they've got huge hollowed out entrances where you, it allows sunlight in, and they've got a lot of like mirrors and like reflective like pathways and stuff set up so that that light keeps most of the city pretty bright during the day. But at noon, the sun is directly above the mountain and cannot shine in either the east or west like gates so um around lunchtime around noon um during the day all of high helm kind of goes dark and has to be lit by torches and and <laughs> such so like you know a lot of the inhabitants have dark vision so it doesn't bother them as much um but for those that don't you know they have to like kind of light lanterns and torches and get get by for a couple of hours until the sun comes back out um after black noon has passed so um yeah so Black Noon Gauntlet, that's kind of new. It's maybe something that not all of you have heard of before. Someone could probably do, like, another check on that, like a, a lore or a society maybe, check. Uh, or well, just it's based a, off that, it's I mean, lore? High Helm is probably close to the equator, right? Since it's Ooh. directly above us and not maybe uh, towards the south or the uh, north side of the sky? Yeah. It's not directly right? above you guys. It is, it is you, a little oh, bit... Uh, okay. Draw Galarian on a world map. Or is Galarian flat, yeah, flat Earth? Galarian? I don't know. Yeah. They live on well, the a plane. Well, the plane's going to be flat either way. Touche. I want to see a globe. 
Um, I'm going to roll esoteric lore on that because I know a little bit about everything, yeah. but at a minus two because uh, it's not. I'll roll society. I am going to stop playing the same. I'm actually going to transfer over to Starfinder now because I just rolled a natural one. So that's like <laughs> my sixth one in three games. So. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. You rolled oh, a lot. Oh, um, you need to. But you should have made some mood mood water for your rocks. Uh, mood water. I have dubious knowledge. Um, so uh, when you oh wait, never mind. I definitely critically failed that recall knowledge. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah you, you get to loot that one, pal. Even if I norm it, normally, even if I fail, I get a bit of actual knowledge, but also a bit of false knowledge. I don't know which is which. But if I critically fail, then I don't get anything. So that's probably. Man, I don't know. I guess I don't know. Should that be a a, a secret check, Brendan? I almost wonder. Um, I'm not sure. If, or if my skills? if my knowledge checks, since I have dubious knowledge, should be. You know, I think honestly, I don't know. In second edition, I'm not sure about what all counts as a secret check or not. Um, I rolled a it twelve. It is secret. Recall knowledge is secret. I, I'm not sure if that would be good enough to, to know anything about this. Um, a twelve. I... Yeah, I mean, you live in the city. Um, I think maybe Angoric would know that. So Black Noon, like, it kind of has that, you know, I just gave you a description of what Black Noon represents um, in High Helm, but you would know that there's also a popular Thieves Guild that operates under that same name, the Black Noon Thieves Guild. That's sick. Um, An so they and, time for thieving. And, right? And then, uh, so they, they, they operate under that name, um, and so the Gauntlet is like a, a maze of their own construction that they use to test out new recruits. Oh, uh, that's cool. But Angoric, you know, being an upstanding citizen, wouldn't know anything about where that is, or you know, like how to how to get more information about that. Um, would I know any more information? I got a sixteen society. Um, so I would say um, that you maybe what level it's at. Probably, yeah, probably not. I mean, the Black Noon Gauntlet you assume would probably be. Um, at, at the lowest level in the city somewhere, it would probably okay. even be a little bit slightly outside the city. So, um, okay, yeah, it's hard so, to, hard to say. Maybe I've heard of it, but don't know much more. Yeah, yeah, maybe you know the rumors of it that are spread around the top ends of the, yeah. the mountain, and yeah, you got or, quite a few or maybe, between you. Maybe and it's kind of like how we view MS thirteen. It's like, yeah, we know there were a thing or they're a bad thing or something, but. That's about it. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's a little bit of information. Um, kind of, you know, and after Another a while, the merchant's into, like, maybe? well, I've got to be going, you know, and he, he trots along with, with uh, Molly and John. Um, and then you guys continue going up through the city. So anyone who hasn't done this yet, is anybody looking for rumors in Stone Breach, like in the next level up when you guys get out there? Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah. Um... Society. Uh, ooh, twenty-two. Nice. Okay. Twenty-two is a is a is a mean roll. That's pretty good. Let me see what I can give you here. So mean. Go <laughs> Karu. Ah. Yeah. Okay. I'm a little feisty. So, um, you get up to Stone Breach, and there is this, um, inn. It's kind of got, or no, I, I don't think it's an inn. I think it's a restaurant. What's the difference? I guess you can sleep at an inn. <laughs> That's the difference. Yeah. It's a, it's a tavern. So there's a local joint mm. in Stonebreach called the Silver Cap Tavern. It's famous for for its mushroom themed dishes, um, and you come across a group of people who are angrily discussing about how they hope they get their silvers back for the last meal that they had there because everyone who ate at the inn um the last couple of nights has gotten violently ill to the point where the inn owner has had to shut down the business um Oops. and like and like uh is looking for someone to be able to do a little investigation and and find out what could possibly be going wrong <laughs> sounds like someone... jinky sounds like a job for was it? What is the Scooby-Doo group? The Mystery Gang? 
It's Scooby Doo group. <laughs> That was my inner coming out. <laughs> it's the mystery machine, right? What do they call themselves? Right. The mystery yeah, they mystery have mystery, mystery Inc. Ink. Yeah. Sounds okay. like a job for mystery ink. <laughs> Avengers, gather! Gather! <laughs> what did, did you start to say something, Sarah? I think you got cut off. Yes. Oh, I asked if it was called Chipotle. This oh, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. It's called the... Uh, I think I said Silver Cap Tavern. Close enough. Starbucks. Um, when we make it to Stone Breach, and Gorik would like to visit his favorite local brewery, the Cracked Anvil Brewery, to grab a pint. Okay. Just in the middle of the day, he's just like, bye, everybody. Yeah. I'm going to go get a drink. Yeah, I, I invite the dwarves along Big if move. they're interested. Just but the dwarves, not the puny stick boy. <laughs> Okay, well, when I hear about uh, the, the silver-capped uh, tavern, uh, I let uh, uh, names, 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 uh, Huang uh, know about it, uh, her being a druid, uh, saying mushrooms. that they might have a, a problem with mushrooms. And I understand that identifying mushrooms is sometimes difficult for uh, the untrained, and thought that she might have a, a better time of it. Good plan. Long loves the shrooms. She's ready for it. <laughs> cool. I, I guess correctly. Wong loves the shrooms. All right. Add and, uh, that as a highlight. Maybe add that as a sound bite for later. <laughs> okay. Good. Um. So yeah. So so it sounds like Angoric wants to go on a little field trip. Um. So if you want to, you guys can go to the crack only the dwarves. brewery. Um. Apparently only yeah. the dwarves. The, the others will have to follow along. I... Um. And, and I could go them. for a pint. But uh, the Cracked Anvil is kind of a modest brewery and tap house, um, catering to dwarves who are looking to drink and relax in peace. And it's run by a retired soldier named Skog Bloodhammer. Hi. Skog I can see why you like this place, Angoric. It seems like just your type of place. It's good for the year. Hi. I realize it's only noon, but. Damn if that lady shimmer snip didn't do a work on me. I'm going to have to let you all run out front next time. That was not my smartest place. And he, he gets in and he uh, 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 just sits down at the bar and asks for a pint of, uh, God, what did Ugris used to drink? Triaxian Ugris. ale. <laughs> Triaxian ale. This is Triaxis. Are you one of them astronomers? I don't know uh, what you're talking oh, about. I wrong character. Uh, give me some of <laughs> some of your most potent. He says, "Well, we're famous for our brown ales. We've got one, the brown pepper, that incorporates black pepper and a brown ale. So you can see my naming conventions are quite clever." Pepper pig. I, are you okay. from Australia, by chance? No. Okay. Are you? What no. in Australia? <laughs> Did you say something? <laughs> what is Australia? <laughs> Maybe, yeah, episode but, uh, title, what is Australia? <laughs> what is Australia? You ain't from around here, are you? <laughs> but uh, when you enter, okay. I mean, I, I think uh, Angoric would, would recognize on the wall, uh, you know, there's the sign, the rules uh, of the place. It's like, no business dealings, no politics. This is strictly for people to drink and relax. So, yeah, you guys are served ales. You know, if you if you ask for them, um, they have like a, like a pretty good variety. So there's something for everyone um, if they want them. Um, and then you get kind of like a quiet table in the corner where you can all sit and kind of talk. Um, oh, and Gorg nice would be familiar with the barkeeper, and he's gonna choose to sit at the bar, and you know, have a conversation around whether or not he knows of anything going on or anything that, you know, this band of um, adventurers that I came in with could, you know, assist with. Uh, does Zangoric look like he's wanting to kind of go off on his own? Because uh, if, if not, I'll probably just walk up next to you, but if you look like you're like, give me some space, then I'll let you do your own thing. 
Um, you're more than welcome to come with Elmhead. Okay, cool. Well, you know how awkward it is. Yep. You know how awkward it is when you're you're going out with work friends <laughs> for the first time, and you're not sure if you're supposed to sit right next to them or like sit at a table <laughs> right. and wait for them to come out and talk to you. Uh, Wakuru okay. goes with the rest of everyone else, I assume, on a table off to the side um, because he's kind of upset with Ingort because he keeps messing up his name. <laughs> um, so I, I walk up to the barkeeper and I'm say, I say, what, what's the barkeeper's name? Mr. Gog Bloodhammer. Gog Bloodhammer? <laughs> That's dope. Gog. I'm sure you know Elnet Large Hand, and I motion to Elnet biggest hands. <laughs> Say, Jesus, he's got large hands. <laughs> oh, <laughs> those hands anyway. uh, he, Elnat, not Elnat, but uh, and Gorth gives a chuckle. <laughs> the <laughs> name does ring true. Uh, but Skog, we've been tasked with, you won't believe this, making stories for ourselves, discovering adventures. <laughs> um, you wouldn't happen to know anything that we could do around here, around Stone Breach, to help the locals. Well, interesting you came to me for this information. I do hear things from time to time as well. I know they're always looking for good dwarves to help out uh, a Torag shield. You know, the massive fortification project for the city. Any craftspeople and workmen's uh, are worth their salt have been asked to go down to uh, go up to King's Heart uh, in Burntown and assist the smiths. Sounds like a good job for probably make it. You could probably make a good chunk of silver. Um, Elnat will have interest. In that, I mean, he is, he's a, he, he forges weapons. It's probably going to be pretty similar that he can still, he can, he can forge things that, uh, for that. Uh, and Gorf will turn to Elnat and give him a hearty pat on the shoulder, <laughs> you know, the, the half his size shoulder and say, <laughs> well, large hand, are you interested? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. I would love to do this. Uh, oh. Helping out would be good. I was getting to him, and I give him a little punch <laughs> in the shoulder, too. <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> Is everyone yeah. else sitting at a table off to the side? Uh, I think uh, we're actually at the bar. Right, yeah, yeah. You two are at the bar. Is everyone else. Did everyone else come? No. No, I think Robert it was didn't. just us three. Oh, I thought everyone no, came. No, you guys were doing this oh. at the same time. Oh, I thought we all followed and were just hanging out at the bar while they're sitting there drinking. Okay. I, I think Check you're it. the only one that's at the bar right now. I mean, not at the bar, at the table. Okay. Uh, well, I'm not yeah. if not everyone else came. I thought we all followed along. No, 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 it was, okay. It was the orc and the dwarves. Yeah, that's what I heard. I heard originally, but then or Brendan was like, I guess you are. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't matter. All good. Kalru went and did his own thing for. for I'm just waiting. Too. I'm just sitting yeah. outside waiting for them to be done. Okay, I. Uh, he had a puppet show to attend. I flip a silver coin wow. to his dog, <laughs> and um, drain the beer that he gave to me, and leave the glass on the bar, and uh, walk out. Okay, he's like, he says, if you're interested, I'd look up Elga Spahagen. Elvis Farhagen? How do you spell that? <laughs> I'll type it in just <laughs> so you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Name just pops up into the thin air. Some okay, illusory script or something. In front of you. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, so he kind of gives you that parting bit of advice, um, but we'll kind of come back. Is anybody else looking for um, things down here in Stone Breach, or are we look at we headed up to the next uh, part of the city. Well, Rune's feeling disheartened, having not been able to talk to people down below, and not mm -hmm. able to roll another diplomacy. He's just he's just <laughs> kicking a can down the road, <laughs> a rock. Yep. 
a lump all of iron. Of feels. Yeah. A lump of a raw lump of iron. <laughs> <laughs> We're a mountain filled with dwarves. Oh, I feel like there's just lumps of oh. iron laying around, you know. Oh. Kicking a diamond. Yeah. <laughs> it's a worthless creepy. gemstones. He throws it down. They never had the, the gemstone <laughs> fad that uh, our world did that made them That's more right. worth than they were. These stones aren't useful for building things. You smash them and throw them away. Uh, yeah, so, um, so yeah, you guys kind of get a little bit more information there. Um, heading on up to the, the upper reaches. I don't know, we've, we've got Huang and, uh, has Karu rolled for anything? Yeah, I got the, yeah. the silver cap tavern. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, the silver cap tavern. And then I, I talked to Huang about that. That's true. So is there anything that you guys have decided that you wanted to go to check out right now? Or are we still just mainly headed up top? Yeah, I think we're working our way up, right? Because yep, we want to go our way up, and... do a little yeah. information gathering there, and then work our way so, back down. <clears throat> I guess... Because both the uh, translator and the, like, fabrication stuff, like, building stuff... Um, like those, I, I could do either one of those really. Yeah. Um, I personally it, know about seven languages, so I'm. Do you? I'm good there. Yeah. Sheesh. Okay, so maybe if both of us do the do that, just to make it a little more worth the while. Does that work? Yeah, I, I mean, t potentially the rest of us can go and uh, try to find some other work on the same level, maybe while you guys are. Yeah. Yeah. While we're up there. That's fair. Yeah. I, I think feel, one I minute like at a on... time we uh, we jump between Brendan. So if you could just get cool. ready for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll just you do might ten well different things us... at once. Yeah. Yeah. Just there put us in initiative, and we yeah. can each yeah. Have Let's our just own. all pick something different to do. Cool. Works for me. Yeah. And six <laughs> seconds at a time, <laughs> explain what's going on. Mm -hmm. I think this makes sense. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So I will those, say those that. Make for a good stream. I don't think anybody else has, uh, has rolled anything, um, so I'll say that you guys get all the way to the top to uh, to King's Crown again. Um, and we'll, we'll finally roll over Elnat's uh, 23 that he got. Okay. Um, so Elnat, so you, go, you get up top, um, and, and you're kind of hailed by um, uh, it's maybe maybe uh, one of your uh, one of your siblings or something. And it's like they're like shouting at it, and they come running over. Didn't get any of that screen, by the way. all of that. Yeah, I figured. It's out. It's awesome. I'm running over and I'm like, did you hear? There's a cloud dragging hanging out. And then, like, just about that time, you just see, like, a shadow of, like, wings fly over as this white, like, blue and white dragon just, like, coasts o over you all. Um, and, then, and then flies over to uh, uh, a, a building in the nearby neighborhood. I'm going to go ahead and roll a, a knowledge check on that. Um, yeah. Um, Brendan, I'm going to have you do this one secret, I... though, because I think I'm going to have most of my knowledge checks for me be secret because I have that thing where potentially I could get false information, if that works for you. Um, and this is a... I actually have... Hold on. Uh, normal esoteric lore... Haunts, curses, and creatures of any type. So this should be a normal plus six roll. So, and if I fail normally, I get a piece of actual information, a piece of false information, but I don't know which is which. Okay. And that's why. What specifically uh, are you trying to find out? I just want to know about these dragons, like, uh, like just very general information. Not looking for like weaknesses or anything like that. Like I don't think we're going to be fighting this cloud dragon, but. Yeah, uh, I I yeah. was going to ask if. Uh if it was friendly so yeah that's kind of what i'm just for just real basic general general knowledge you know okay. yeah so uh so uh I, I guess you know the the dragon flies over and uh and um while well, croon kind of goes into like you know that's so raven mode he kind of like looks off in the oh. distance and i think like, more like jimmy neutron like brain blast you know? jimmy neutron brain blast <laughs> yeah. there you go. so uh, so he's thinking really hard and he's just like cloud dragons um are from like 
the elemental plane of air, uh, but they are like explorers and travelers and scholars. Like they like, they like oh. learning new things and like uh, that's nuts and seeing new and, and going new places. So uh, yeah, it, uh, a, a a giant city uh, at the top of a, like one of the tallest mountains in the area would be a good place for it to meet a cloud dragon. Um, cool. And so uh, I th I think uh, Elnats. Uh, uh, like yeah, we'll say his, his one of his younger sisters is like is like talking to him about it, and he's just like, they said that it's a young cloud dragon that just showed up recently, and she's talking off, or he's talking off the ear of everybody there, and and he won't leave him alone, and keeps playing pranks on people, and they just want somebody to like occupy his time for a little bit so they can get work done. Um, Isn't that right. so cool? And Gorik is very interested in meeting this cloud dragon. I, th I feel like how, how, is it this like a... might also be a good job for Huang. Thanks for the follows, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, if yeah, like, Huang is it like a, part. it's like a, it's a drag, like, it's big, right? Like, this is a, is it like... Large sized at least, yeah. Yeah, it's like a whole ass dragon. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yep. But it, it sounds like the, the dragon is like... I don't know, like a young teenager, and it's just like, okay, we need someone really? to keep you out of our hair. Is that kind of what it is? So that people can get work done? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think I think Huang could probably be good. Did, did we get the young dragon's name? Mm. Probably have to go ask um, it. Yeah, I mean, it, she, she tries to say something, but it's so okay. unpronounceable <laughs> that it's just like, I... I don't know okay. what she's trying to make, what she's trying that's, to tell you. I that's fine. I just got a common name, you know. Yeah, I was I was just making a note of it so I could recall, um, and I was gonna put the name if if we had it. Um, yeah, cool. Um, Shocked by a for a bit. Um, what's you said? This was my younger sister, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's her name? <laughs> uh, Tallulah. <laughs> What do you mean? What's her name? Tallulah. It's your sister. You should know this. It's your goddamn <laughs> sister, Elna. How many sisters do you have? I have a lot. <laughs> At least one. If it, Brendan, if you want, I will make I will make names for them all. Um, oh, I mean, it's up to you. I, I'll 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 do it after, out of game. Um, Tallulah, do that you know where? Me. Yeah, there you go. Tallulah, do you know where I would need to go? To inquire more about this well i heard that the dragon was staying at the cloud spire embassy okay so that's what uh, of course spire. it was <laughs> the dragon's just See? chilling at an embassy oh <laughs> man it's so wild well, he's from around here i know but i mean there's, that's fair there's, there's an embassy but it could have also been... your friend wakroon doesn't seem very smart <laughs> does he? no he's really not seems he, like he's gonna he's really not zero <laughs> yeah I bet if I just study a little <laughs> bit, I'll be way smarter than him. <laughs> I bend down, get close, and I, and, and I don't try to actually whisper this, but you already are. You already are. <laughs> so I think she's gonna laugh and then kind of run off, run, run off again. She's like, oh, I'm gonna go tell mom and dad. Um, well, it's their problem now. Yeah. So we we saw the dragon fly off and land on a not too far away building. Is the embassy on the map? With, Do we know where it's at? Uh, I don't think it's on. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, so it's on the King's Crown map. It's number 11. Number 11, King's Cloudspire Crown. Embassy. Look at that. There it is, right down here. Oh, I have cool, cool. a line that I want to say to this cloud dragon when we meet it. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to tell you what um, I'm going to say to it. Love to hear it. Okay. Where the dragon landed, was that at the embassy? Or is it a different building? Uh, yeah, we'll say that that's the direction he was headed, at least. Like, Okay. Yeah. Um. So I think while our intelligent friends are <laughs> speaking or teaching languages, the rest of us should try to <laughs> make friends with a dragon. I mean, a, what a group of unintelligent people! I think do. I would imagine everyone. <laughs> like, okay, I guess, like rolling and, over any of our checks. Is this a common thing to see this, or is this like a big deal that this dragon has showed up? Or are there like normal townsfolk that are just like, just another day, a dragon from yeah. another plane, like? Yeah, no, I think I think it's I think it's a, I think it's a pretty big deal. Like, I think okay, the fact so that, okay. we probably all want to go hang out and 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 check this guy out. I'd imagine. 
I would imagine. I, Wakroon's going for sure, but Wakroon's also one of the less intelligent people that wasn't going to be helped with the languages. But I think uh, the more no, the merrier. I will say, Karu's uh, uh, curiosity is piqued, especially when he hears about a prankster dragon in particular. <laughs> <laughs> Karu the Poppet. A, a trickster. Allegedly. Allegedly. Hmm? Sick! I mean, so oh, I guess go around. Are we? Is every, yeah, is I was just saying, lots of options. Um, I think that's what, like twelve, <laughs> twelve different things, or yeah, twelve yeah. different things that you guys could do around the city. Um, yeah. So let's like, ignore the dragon and go help the mules, right? Yep. Well, we still no, have a lot of I know, kill I, I, for that. I was that was yeah. yeah. Let's go uh, to the dragon. I think, let's go to the dragon. Yeah, I think we gotta go yeah. to the dragon. If it's a big deal and like, this isn't like a casual thing, like the dragon, dragon's the move. Let's we, go. Let's go. Mule. Let's go pick a fight. Yeah, we're doing the mules tonight. I'm not. I'm, I, was, I, I was. I was kidding about skipping the mule. Like we are definitely doing the mules tonight. Yeah. It is happening. Okay, to the dragon. Maybe. How Maybe long? Or how like? What's the like? How long does it track? Like across the map? Like what's the? Is it taking us like hours to walk from the center down to eleven, or is it like a fifteen minute walk, or like what's what's going on? Like I don't. Give me a, give me uh, a scale here. It looks like the the scale on the map is like a thousand feet is like oh yeah it says it right there okay like like six squares or something so it's just like uh, I mean like how long does it take you to walk a thousand that's that's a a fifth of a mile I'm very bad know? at distance but okay so not very well, long so we get there pretty yeah. easily I mean like it, like it maybe maybe that would be five minutes so you know like going all the way across the map would probably take you thirty minutes to an hour of walking or something like that cool. Um, they do it. Elnat is kind of, well, Justin is trying to decide if he wants to go do one of the other things. Cause like, while the, the dragon does sound really fun, it, I, I think some of the point is also to have our own things. Sure. I, but that's, that's just what I, what I have felt. I don't know if that's actually the case. Yeah, the way I've thought about it is that we do pick up our own kind of individual quests, um, but we're probably going to need backup for each of them. And so I think we're just acquiring them individually and then we'll do them as a group. Okay. I think we should give each other walkie talkies or the Pathfinder 2 equivalent of walkie talkies. That way we can. That's uh, if we need help. We can. Cups on strings. Okay. Thousand yeah, feet of string. Who has string, a thousand yeah. feet of string uh, mm -hmm. on their? Uh, yeah, so I will say, can you can use rope for that? Does rope right. work? If you talk loud enough, <laughs> yeah. does rope work? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think if you talk loud enough, rope works. I think it has uh, to be tight. I think it's it's gonna be real. Tight. Oh, you, make, you can make rope yeah. tight. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. Um, so I will say that some of these things maybe sound like they might be more pressing than others. Like yeah. you know, like if there's a there's a. A, 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 a kobold youth that's like missing, you know, and has been missing for a few days. You're like, well, finding him sooner rather than later would probably be better. And if you, I mean, if maybe somebody is like, oh, found out about a kobold. Hey, the body's not going anywhere. If, uh, if, if uh, somebody's Christ. been pranking this this Ogdenar rancher every single night, you know, it's like maybe maybe getting that taken care of, you know, would, would he'd be appreciated. Yeah, I, then, I guess no, I wasn't thinking so much the language one, but I was thinking more of the forging stuff but yeah um if that's not super pressing then yeah yeah i'll, I'll go with the dragon pressing. the mules those dragons probably the dragon I've dragon the mules there's no third session yeah <laughs> yeah we can we can oh, do dragon and then third mules. session but it's we only been like three hours <laughs> 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 we were in helgen's yeah. helgen's in like two hours ago <laughs> Well, it was like it was probably like pretty early in the morning when you guys went to the end. Yeah, so maybe six hours. Um, and then I think you went to tryouts uh, after that. So that probably we probably had to wait a little while for that to get started, and then did, did tryouts. Probably took an hour or two. Um, and then you did a couple hours of exploring down to the bottom of the, of, the, of of everything, and then a combat which probably lasted like all of like you know twenty four seconds or something. <laughs> um, and then you know like you kind of wrap things up there. And then a couple hours exploring back up. So yeah, it's probably like it's past past noon at this point. It's probably two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, 
So it's it's probably like it, I mean even Black Noon, like the thing that we were talking about happened while you guys were doing all this exploration. Um, and now you're back up to the top. Um, yeah, you can definitely go to the embassy if you want. The embassy is on the south side of town, um, where the where the dragon is staying. And then um, we also talked about uh, well the Ogdenars. We, where did we decide that one was going to be at? All the way down, I think, right? Or second so from the bottom, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I think it was second it's gonna from be in the Stone bottom. Breach. So that would be back down below. So, okay. um, you know, you know, uh, uh, Burn Town, the area where they've got all these forges and stuff set up, is in King's Heart. So it's on the second level. Um, the animal, uh, uh, the Ogdenar farmer, was is all the way in the third level, and so is the Silver Cat Tavern. Um, so that's down in Stone Breach, and then uh, that's yeah, the you in the problem. Black Noon. The Black Noon is probably happening all the way at the bottom, somewhere in the depths, below the depths. So, Dragon Ogdenar split up slash next week. Yeah, that works. Dragon Ogdenar Black Noon, I think, is the order I'd want to go in. Uh, we might split between Black Noon and Forge or something too, but I think everyone wants to go see the dra everyone's character wants to go see the dragon, right? While Kroon's very interested. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's oh, yeah. not. I don't think we should plan ahead anymore. I think I want to leave Brendan as ambiguous as possible. So I think we just go. Let's go distract this dragon. This trickster dragon. Okay. So, um,. You go down to the, uh, the the south part of town. Or, I'm sorry, the, the east part of town because these maps are all oriented with west at the top. <laughs> Horrible. Um, so you go down to the east part of of King's Crown. Now remember, this is the uh, the nice neighborhood. This is the this is the top. This is the peak of the mountain, kind of. Um, and so uh, you just draw a giant circle. <laughs> Um, so you head down here to the Cloud Spire Embassy, which is um, several outbuildings kind of surrounding this amphitheater. Uh, the Cloud Spire Embassy exists as a century-old bridge between Avistan, so like the continent that you guys are on, and Garund, uh, which is like the African continent that's, that's, that's south across the, the sea. Um, it, they're two dwarven populations, so that's why the embassy was built like years ago, was to bridge the gap between these two different populations of dwarves so um you get there and you're greeted by um the elderly kobold ambassador um and his name is jikara sind softung so we will go to um Ooh, travel man. locations can you type that out please yeah absolutely no, actually no, it'll please. be uh it'll be on his his uh his image oh perfect Ooh, the travel locations map. So we'll make, let's see, this make, visible. Mm -hmm. Make this visible. Okay. Oh. Okay, go down below. Got it. Oh, there we go. Okay. Mine so took a little bit to in. change. Yeah, I was I was getting everything pulled up. No worries. So yeah, so there's like this, uh, this, yeah, there's some buildings, and oh, then there's okay. this. Uh, yeah, he's he's probably small. I could pick him a little bit smaller actually. Um, but his name is G Um He's like, so uh, he's intr he's he's kind of like manning the 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 operations, and then. Um, so you all kind of come up as a group, um, and this this little it's, this, it's probably like a big, nice nice thick uh, like you know, a nice uh, desk, and you could probably barely see this coval on the other side of it. So he gets up and just like stands on his chair and like kind of leans over so he can see all of you. Can I help you? We're here to talk to the dragon. And in the background, you hear like a, a crash and a boom, and then just like this the loud, like raucous laughter, just like. <laughs> and he yes, kind of, the the, the, uh, 
And so the kobold sort of flinches, um, and he says, Oh, good. I was hoping that someone would come by. Yes, he's, he's straight from the back. Uh, his name is Marsilicanas. Aye, you said Mar Marsilicanas, yeah? Marsilicanas. Marsilica Mark, Mark, Mark. They call him Mark. Is it uh, Marky oh, yes. Mark? Yep. Yes, uh, yes. Yes, uh, yes, he's, he's portrayed by uh, a, <laughs> a certain <laughs> Bostonian actor. I, I, uh, I believe he's well known for his role in the Transformers movies, yeah? Uh, no, I have not heard that. Oh, okay. I'll just walk by him. Is he, is he one of the two actors in Goodwill Hunting from Boston? I don't believe so. Oh. But I haven't seen that film in a long time. <laughs> oh. oh. There he is. There he is. Hey, buddy. Ooh, yeah, look that at that. the dual that's image. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's yeah, so the, you can see the... You can see the AI generated image, and then if you mm -hmm. uh, if you click on it, uh, you can get the uh, the, the, the book, book generated full, image. Book generated image. They're very a bit different. They're very yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's a vibe. Uh, so yeah, we we go in the back. What's I mean? What's uh? Can we? Can I roll a perception check to see... Well, I guess I don't know if perception would be the right thing. My goal is to kind of get a, a a vibe from the dragon. Like, is he happy, upset, mad? Like, kind of, what's his... What's the dragon's body language like? What's the roll? vibe of this dragon? Yeah. Is, what is he going to be upset that we're walking back there to talk to him? Or does he look like he's ready to talk to us? No, I, think it, I think it's just like, you know, a, a, another room in the embassy. So, like, it's it's open to the public sort of thing. Okay. Right. Um, and and uh, I think I think he's excited to talk to people. Okay, that's obvious. No no need, no need for a roll? Yeah. Sick, because I was probably going to get a natural one. Actually, let's just roll it okay. and see what I would have got. Um, and Gorik would oh, like to 19. boldly stride up towards him. I'd like to stride up with Angoric, but I'd like to pull part of my ration out of my, like, bag, I guess. Yeah. Out of a bag. Yeah. And, ha like, hopefully I got some, like, beef jerky or something, and I can this is, has a little off. This is a dragon. <laughs> this is going to be so patronizing. <laughs> it's gonna, that's going to be Highly so intelligent. Uh, I'm actually going to do exploit vulnerability. You know I didn't any of y'all's opinion, so I'm still doing it. That's good. No, no, no. If that's Bitch what your character would do, if that's yeah, what your character play, would do, do play you, your do character. You yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Um, or if he's just a rebel. Wa Wakrun would actually do, like, silently, like, he's just kind of looking at the dragon and trying to remember. He would do exploit vulnerability to just do learn. Oh. No, no, no. Just to learn more about, like, what maybe if this was to come to blows. That's just the kind of person that Wakrun is. Like, he's, he's done uh, too much delving and run into too many things to not at least be aware of what's going on. Um, so I'm going to do an esoteric lore check against the standard DC for this creature, which is a dragon, so it's probably crazy high. I'm probably not going to get anything, uh, but I'm going to roll it anyway, just in case I do. And he rolls Ooh. a nat one. No, actually, a natural 17 for a total Ooh. of, uh, let's see, that's going to be a 23. 23. So, um, very nice. Yeah, I don't think it's I don't think it's good enough. Okay. Yep. Uh, so what Excellent. I learn is that he's kind of uh, walked through. Maybe just thinking to himself, he's just like, I if this thing wanted to, it could kill us all without a second thought. Which might I still can't nail that accent. It still feels wrong every time, but that's okay. I'll okay. I think it sounds good today, Austin. Yeah, it sounds fine today. Oh, okay. Cool. Maybe that's it. So Walker's so, uh, not going to say anything. Not intelligent. Okay. Doesn't. So two of you are walking up to. Uh, He's staying back. Mahar Maharsalik Kness. Um, but yeah, you, we'll, we'll go with the with shortened uh, phrase, Mark. You're walking up to the dragon, Mark. Uh, Spelled so, so, M H A R. So, so. M, M. Yeah, exactly. M H A R. It's Marsilicanas. 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 Yep, basically. Marsilicanes. But, uh, yeah, so you're walking up to Marsilicanes, um, and he kind of turns around, and it's just like, 
Pizza Tours! Yeah! And then, like, and then, like, comes running, like, bounding toward, directly towards you, like, he's gonna just, like, bowl everyone over. I'm but he just immediately... You run a roll intimidate? I always intimidate? like to hold steady. Okay. Delay. Did you say you're gonna roll intimidate? No. Did I hear you correctly? Okay. No. Nope. So both, both of you are just kind of standing there, and like, boat comes bounding up, and he goes, Oh, so many questions. And he's like, Why is this one's skin another color? And like, 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 just like straight up pokes Orpheus in the stomach. So and then he's just like, that. And you, an orc, here in a city of, uh, of dwarves, don't you constantly feel ostracized? Why don't you live amongst your fellows outside the mountain? Constantly. I have a question for you. Of course. I live to answer questions. Do you get to the Cloud District often? <laughs> what am I saying? Of course you don't. And he just kind of like, like pauses there for a second. And then goes, <laughs> Oh, that was a joke! I like it! You're doing very well! <laughs> and just kind of like pats Angoric on the head because he's so much larger than Angoric. Brendan, you might kill your crisp, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Just so I can, I can, uh... So you can do voices. <laughs> You're doing very well! And he's just kind of yeah. pats and work on the head. And I, I also have a question. Oh, go right ahead! What... Hi, Helm, right? Mm -hmm. What brings you to High Helm? Well... <laughs> I am a dragon that lives amongst the clouds, and High Helm is almost a city in the clouds. It seemed a natural pairing. But I was brought here specifically to guard this fine establishment. He's like, uh, is, is it Mr. Soft Tongue? You saw him on your way in. He, uh, requested me specifically. And then, like, if, like those of you guys that are in the back, I can still kind of see the front desk. You can see him, like, shaking his head. <laughs> like, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> Um, he says, but I've noticed, and he like kind of like looks around and then like looks at all of you guys gathered, that the rate of crime in this district seems particularly low, and there's no use for my skills. Oh yes, you're much too valuable, and your skills are much too valuable to be squandered here. Surely there's some other position that much more urgently needs your talents. There is an illegal tunnel on the lower level <laughs> that someone of your immensely valuable position could be utilized for. Oh, you don't say. Is there question? Is there any chance in hell he can even get down to the lower levels? Like it's There's like a, a staircase lady down, right? Lady crab it's, there. It's a pretty big staircase. Okay. This is well. I, I suppose I I could be persuaded to go guard crabs, but. I mean, tell me more about this tunnel. Does it look like it's been used for illicit drug trafficking? Or perhaps <laughs> uh, dwarven smuggling? Perhaps uh, there are youth being kidnapped every day and they need a, a, a hero to come save them? There are, in fact, youth potentially disappearing. Jesus Christ. Christ. What is going Unclear on? Unclear as of right now where they're going. Dwarf trafficking has been quite an issue ever since the rise of Lord Epstein here in town. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are talking about uh, the current events, are we not? I don't we believe are. I've seen that one in the High Helm Times. I don't believe he's with us anymore. Haru, <laughs> <laughs> you're not walk, around walk here. Around, walk around is just like, <laughs> he <rumors>. killed himself. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, definitely not a Hollywood cover-up. <laughs> I... What's Hollywood? I don't know. <laughs> Good point. I, I, right. I have a cover-up. I think I we should I just know. give uh, uh, Mark all of our quests and have him do them for us, and then have him there report back. <laughs> our story can be how we got out of a lot of work. Yeah, <laughs> and with a dragon. <laughs> I'm sure he would know about mushrooms and could protect some... Yeah mules and probably knows lots of languages um probably pretty good at a forge you know dragon um yeah 
Honestly, I don't see any reason to do anything if there's a, a dragon looking for work. All right. So yeah, there there is an illegal tunnel on the lower level. Just, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> tunnels, <laughs> illegal tunnels, it's illegal tunnels. Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, tell me something. This is. Uh, how does it feel? To be s such small beings with no magical powers whatsoever. Um. Ooh, cast of magic. Feels warm. I would oh. like to cast light on the the top of my shoulder. It's gonna like just make a make a shoulder pad or something glow a little bit. Yeah. Um. And he's and he says, "Wow." Oh. Is that not a neat trick? And he's like, and then uh, I think he, he just like starts to like suck in air, and you see like this like he's like the sound of like a thunderclap, and he like starts blowing out this cloud that's like crackling with electricity, and then you hear uh, the uh, the ambassador in the background, uh, Mr. Soft Tongue. No, 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 not again! Please do not destroy them any more of the building with your breath weapon. <laughs> your breath and weapon. He's just like, he's just like, <laughs> he like kind of cuts it off and then starts hiccuping. Oh, this is oh, I always get a terrible case of the hiccups if I stop my breath weapon too early. <laughs> it's like to dry fire in an arrow. Uh, yeah, that's incredible. Yes. He says, uh, "Can any of you control the weather?" I don't know what I would do if I couldn't make storm clouds appear at a bond will. At will, no. will. I, you sound like my uncle. No, I can't cast magic, but I do have this cool chalice. <laughs> he pulls out the chalice and just drinks a little bit from it and puts it away. Just say, I suppose it's a magical artifact of some kind. Please give it here. And like pulls out like a <laughs> giant clawed hand. They go, oh, hi, I'd, I'd, I'd rather not. I'm actually not supposed to have this. Uh, in fact... If you could not ever mention that you saw this, thank you. This is ah secret artifact. Now you've piqued my interest. And he kind of like, like shoving his way past uh, <laughs> Orpheus and uh, and Angoric, and it's just like, come here, little dwarf. I am uh, Mars. What your magical artifact can do. Marcellinus, have you ever? Uh, I know you are a creature of the air and of the Which... sky, but have you ever delved deep into the mountains? Because if you are interested in magical artifacts, that's the. Hey, that's the place to do it. Well, we had plenty of magical artifacts in our sky cities back home. No, that's not what I asked. Well, I've, I'm not as I, It sounds like you have many adventures around. left to do. Well, I, I, su I suppose. I... Um, so basically, I mean, you guys have been talking with them for a little while, but there are probably some checks that you could make um, to kind of like... Um, either answer the questions that he has or get him uh like moved on to a different topic um and that could take uh we're just trying to distract him that's our goal here is like keep right. him not fucking shit up other places yeah so that there's there's like a you could probably use any number of lore checks to kind of give him enough interesting facts and trivia uh that he kind of has to like digest that for a while um but you can see you could do high home lore uh, dwarf lore any lores associated with like dwarven religion, or if you have something else interesting, got cave lore. Um, like, like, oh, you got cave lore. I like, think that, that was relevant cool. to what uh, I was just talking to him about. I yeah. would like to spend the next two hours explaining to him the lore of religion, specifically Fulgrit and her okay. dict. Uh, or what? Over oh. the past. <laughs> dict. <laughs> <laughs> dictations over the past millennia. Okay. Um, Wow. Do I need to make a religion check for that? Uh, yeah. If you've got if you got a lore or a religion check, yeah, go for go for that. What's I don't know what those skills are. God, I'm so uh, I don't know anything uh, about that's, caves. That's that is a religion skill. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, twenty four is really good. Um, so you can spend uh, upwards of, of of two hours just talking about Fulgrit, and so you kind of like sit down in like a comfortable armchair and just start going, and occasionally, um, and he will interject and just be like. Do you find comfort in the idea that there are more powerful creatures than you that you can't see that are taking care of your everlasting soul? And like, and he just like, 
and, and he'll, he'll ask some, some interesting philosophical questions. And I imagine that uh, that uh, Anglic always in, has like a response, I, right? In um, a world where the intervention of gods is very much felt, and that we have undeniable proof of their existence. <laughs> it's true. You do not believe in them. Well, um, I'm not saying that I don't believe. It's more so just so I, I haven't seen anything that uh, uh, applies to me directly. I mean, what what need do dragons have for gods? Okay. Um. So along with that, I think Elnat would also be chiming in with his religion stuff. Um, <laughs> just, just actually. <laughs> Maybe, like, pointing out differences or even just, like, kind of helping out Angoric whenever, like, if a question, if he's struggling with a question that Mark is asking. Um, I got a, I got an 11 for, like, helping out with that. I, I have a religious question about the world of Pathfinder in general. Would you say that Angoric and Elnat follow different religions like entirely or is it more that they follow like there's not really religions um, as much as the fact is there's just like gods that you worship because everyone just knows that like they're actual like they're they actually are real like it's not necessarily not, like a different religion entirely just like different yeah, gods that like you're a like uh, chill with yeah without yeah. God knowing um, certain things yeah. without knowing who Elnet is devoted to I would expect that we both follow the dwarven pantheon um, yeah, because I I'm a cleric of Fulgrit, which is why yeah. I specifically said the dictations of Fulgrit over the yeah. past millennia. Um, yeah, and I have no idea what Elnat's interested in, but um, uh, Elnat's uh, he fought. He's a yeah, uh, Angrod. Angrod. Uh, he's a pal yeah, he's a champion, which is similar to a paladin um, of Angrod, which is the dwarven uh, smithing god. So it's so. like okay, so like. You guys both follow like Greek mythology, but one of you is more into Hephaestus, and the other one's yeah more into like Zeus or something. Okay, cool. Yeah, now, yeah. Fulgrit's Hera and okay, yeah, Fulgrit's Hera. Oh, okay. okay, cool. So yeah, okay, that makes sense. So like that, I'm just trying to picture this conversation more where you're both yeah. like talking about your your different gods, but then like because maybe El not got a lower role, like he's not interjecting as much. But every now and then he's like, yeah. my guy also kind of does that or does something else. Okay. Yeah, Sick. I'm more just kind of trying to give supplemental stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, Walkroom love just loves... Yeah, Walkroom just loves information in general. Like, he's just a little... Like, knows a little bit about a lot of things. So he's he's fairly intrigued just listening. But a lot of it I don't think is probably new to him, having grown up in High Helm. Like, this is probably stuff that he at least knows or was taught a little bit. But it's always, like you know, appreciate hearing things from, like, a local expert type of thing. So he's just kind of chilling in a lawn chair that he always carries on his back. So, yeah, to compel um, us. And, and during this time, um, I think Elnat would also try to, like, one of the things he will try to stress is that since his god is the, the god of the forge, um, that's why all of his, his uh, fam his, or his clan's smithing is the best, that our... our the new metals that we've come up with are actually better than a lot of people think and uh, try to make that a big point. Yeah. That's he probably cool. drops, drops his clan name a few times and he's yeah. just like, he's like, oh yeah, we're the, we're the best at smithing. Uh, you know, you, we're the best out there. Um, okay, yeah, I mean, like, you definitely entertain uh, Nas. Marsilicanas, uh, for a long time. I mean, with, with that much information, uh, and you feel like the dragon is kind of like interjecting more and initially, you know, asking questions. And then after a while, um, seems like so preoccupied with all the information that you've given it. Just like, I, I think it might take me some time to, uh, to ponder these workings and perhaps I will bring the teachings of, of your people back to my, back to my hometown when I return. Says we may even erect a, a small little temple to your deities just for fun. I, <laughs> just for fun. Do I feel like for... Mark and I have become friends to some extent? Yeah, I feel like you've uh, you've become pretty good friends. Um, and uh, and like and he tells you about some of the uh, the you know the ways that he's been spending his time since joining the cities. Apparently, he's been. Um, uh, spending some of his free time, you know, because there's no crime in this this district. He's been kind of flying around 
and just like dropping in on anybody that looks like an, an important person. And apparently he's he's scared uh, various members of the, the council of, of the nine, like like the, the leading religious council in town, and also members of the king's own like cabinet. He's just like dropped in on them like as they're walking along, and he's like he's like I dare say some of them looked like they needed to clean their trousers after I dropped in on them. Like he's just like telling you these stories about like, and he's he's like it's also quite fun to involve them deeply in theological and religious and political debates uh, just out in the town square where other people can gawk and hear, listen to hear what they're saying. He's like, you'll find that some politicians will not stick to their own values. He's like, when, when, when pressed forward in front of a crowd, they can be quite political. Excellent. Yes, I have experienced that myself here in High Helm. Um, you mentioned your hometown. Where do you hail from, Mark? <laughs> well, there are there are many cities in the elemental plane of air that I know the name of. <laughs> uh, it's good that you have Chris turned off, but it is very obvious with your Google. <laughs> the <now>. chat GPT. <laughs> it's it's not a bad sound. I mean, yeah. if I had to pause for something at night, yeah, it is, Austin uh, doesn't like it. It's a good. Well, it's not good all day when you're like at work and you just no, constantly hear fair. typing. But yeah. like on occasion, it's just like I also have a mechanical keyboard, so I can hear it myself, you know. But so, so he's he's like he's like oh, I come from a, a small suburb, but it's part of the the capital city, Armen Klisk. What is a suburb? Now it's <laughs> well, you see. Me. In the elemental plane of air, our cities are quite large and sprawling uh, metropolises. So uh, we have to basically create smaller cities, uh, a sort of like a district uh, within the city, um, and, and give them all separate uh, PO boxes so that the mail can be delivered. <laughs> Aye, but they're all, they, they all are separate cities, yeah? Like, uh, there's not cities within cities, right? Like, imagine, like, a, a larger city, and there's no, like, that's, it's all separate, because that's how cities work, yeah? It's tough to say. Okay. Interesting. It might work differently wherever <laughs> you come from. I know, that's how it works where I'm from, actually. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, yeah, you feel like you've, uh, you've kind of befriended the dragon and also <laughs> kind of entertained the dragon for a while. Like, you, you notice that, uh... This pile of paperwork that was on the front desk uh, is almost completely dwindled down to nothing, um, and there's not uh, people running through the streets screaming because the dragon is like swooping down on them. Um, gosh. The day. Uh, I got one more question for him. Then, if it feels like we're, we're wrapping things up, I go, "Hi, uh, Mark. Um, we have uh, some trouble that we're going to be dealing with later this evening uh, down in the lower districts with." Uh, some cave mules, some, uh, what were the Angorans? In, uh, uh, Ogdenars? Yeah. Ogdenars. I, 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 I believe you should probably know that. I, I had a <laughs> lapse in judgment. We were at the bar earlier, uh, and Gorik can drink lots more than I can because he's an orc and that's how they are. I, but, uh, uh, any information you might have on them, it uh, appears like that there might be some sort of. Advantage. Yeah, that, that's true, but <laughs> I'm, I'm making an excuse. Um, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I feel like orcs would probably hold their own, you know? Um, uh, any, any information that you might have on these creatures? Have you uh, encountered them? I don't feel like there's very much to know, but uh, I. Uh, you're so knowledgeable and full of information that you have any ideas. Uh, the idea is that there may be something supernatural going on down there, but we uh, we aren't entirely sure. It might just be a, a trickster, a prankster. And uh, I've heard the rumor that you might be into tricks or pranks yourself, being so wise as you are. Well, I, I would never uh, mess with a man's livelihood, if that's what you're implying. Uh, would you not, like, though? But, not even just I mean, a little bit. All in good fun, of course. Ah, uh, there you go. <laughs> It would never go this far. If there's a man willing to hire someone out, uh, then, then uh, it's it's gone on for too long. Perhaps you're not dealing with tricksters. Perhaps you're dealing with someone who has a grudge. Ooh. I, good, good thought. We'll look into that. But I appreciate your time here today, and I think... Uh, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I think that I do when I say that we've appreciated it. Huang, what do you think? 
Hi. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> well, uh, you can come back anytime. You're all welcome here at the Cloud Spire Embassy. It is under my protection, after all. Hi. Thank you. As uh, we're leaving, uh, Mark hears a voice from behind him say, uh, It was very nice to meet you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> he, looks, he looks down and sees this tiny doll, and he goes, what manner of creature is that? <laughs> kind of goes like, you know, brings his his hand all the way down, like his eye right up to, like, where Karu is. Like, the the size just, you know, is, is just so significantly different between the two of them. Just imagine your eye is, like, the same size as, like, Karu. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, it's the same size, actually. There you go. Did you guys have the same size eyes, or...? Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. his, his eye oh, okay, is the gotcha. size of my entire person. Yeah, I thought he just had really small eyes. A, a big ass dragon with little tiny eyes. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Just, yeah. They're not well, real. One of you know. seems to have forgotten your animated doll. It's just toddling around here and speaking <laughs> all in the tomb. Hi, good call, oh, cool. Karu. Uh, if you let's head on out. He says, and, and as you're leaving, he kind of whispers to you, and he's just like. I think we could play some very good pranks on some dignitaries together. <laughs> Imagine me chasing them down and you inside of their suitcase all over the lawn. <laughs> now I know where to find you, my friend. I don't know. The thought of a dwarf carrying around a suitcase is just funny to me. Yeah. Well, back then we called it a lockbox. I think those are two very different things, but all right. In my head, they are at least. If you put some spinners on it, it's real fancy. Oh, okay. We did invent the wheel, after all. What's happening? All right. So yeah, so you guys can uh, can move on, kind of from the dragon conversation. We uh, feel like we did what we needed to do there, right? Okay. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Sick. All right, so we want to go down and help out these damn mules. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. I think uh, not only is Orpheus excited to help out the mules, but Lorna is as well. And for that reason, Who's Lorna? I'm in. Life imitates art, am I right? True. Mm -hmm. True. That's how you give the character depth. That's why Walker, yeah. never mind. So I will ask, uh, so I'll, I'll assume, I guess, uh, that like you probably leave there at around five or six in the evening. Um, sure. And, and maybe you guys all get, get a meal together somewhere. Ooh. Um, Let's can we stop back by uh, our favorite bar down there that we just went yeah, to? Very, very well said. We want to go back down. Room. Yeah, sure. We Sounds could go good. back and uh, tell old Bloodhammer that we just uh, hung out with a fucking dragon for four hours. <laughs> is that uh, is the is that um, uh, in bar tavern? I don't remember which one it was on the map at all. That's maybe number seventeen. Yeah, it's number Cracked 17. Anvil Brewery. All right, sick. Look at mm. that. Number 17. Cool. You think I just pulled the name of a brewery in town? I that? honestly <laughs> thought you had the High Helm book and you looked up one. Nope. Uh, nope. Well, Brandon sent it, so I figured maybe maybe you did. But yeah, that's fair. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but, so I think uh, we just maybe uh, go back there and get like a burger. Like a, a burger from... A tap house. Yeah, you so wouldn't want a burger, Austin. You wouldn't want any of the local delicacies. You I'm sure playing Jane Beige Burger. <laughs> no, hey, walk, hey, walk hey, hey. Maybe, <laughs> So bad. Maybe we'll eat. What was it? Schnitzel. Schnitzel. There you go. It was all right. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm schnitzel and be like, wow, this is just the best. We <laughs> it's pretty good. So authentic. A chicken nugget. A giant chicken nugget. This is a bit of a time check, but we haven't heard from Huang in a very long time. Is she safe? Is she all right? We just heard from her, Josh. I literally just spoke. An hour and a half in, it could be time for an intermission. Boys, am I right? And, and potentially Boys. a a, a mid them. mid episode banter. Can't castrate the two legged ones. And this would we also try. be a good time for the episode Um. Yeah, we could do our mid episode banter and yeah. uh, an intermission. Like I don't care. We don't have to. I was just saying that'd be funny. Yeah. The question is, which boys can we neuter? Not me. I'm All fast of as fuck, them boy. Except for the ones in Quick the as hell. Shirt. Quick as hell. Fast as fuck. You can try. I would grab Austin with my hand, one hand, 
and get him around the windpipe, and it'd be fun. <laughs> just fucking oh. choke. That's slam. Austin Strat for everything. <laughs> what? That's yeah, fun. You'd, you'd break his wings. I'd break his wings. He's got hollow bones. If I had hollow I bones and bones. wings, then yeah, you could very easily break them because they're hollow. <laughs> All right, Brendan, what's our bant? What's the bant? Yeah, I might go get another I might get another gonna... drink. Yeah, so anybody that wants to can hop up, get a drink. Um, if you need to use the restroom or something, like put us on the character break. screen so that we can. Uh... But uh, but I will I'll ask um, I'm listening. What is your favorite smell? <laughs> wow. Wow, Ooh. Brendan, very insensitive. That's insensitive. What if I can't smell? Yeah, Brendan, oh, what then? I don't know. I guess the, the, we would go with what is your favorite sound, I assume. Okay. Mm. Based on the fact that you have to be able to hear me in order to be playing this game right now. Or I can only hear you when I see your video. Maybe. Maybe you maybe you have like a closed caption thing going. An expert lip uh, reader. Yeah. I do have closed yeah. captions going on the, this, by the way. Anybody on Twitch that can't hear, can't hear what I'm saying, but you can turn on CC. All right, does anybody want to go first? Does anybody want to answer the Bant question? I'm use the restroom, but I am listening. I can't go first. I have an answer. I do, too. Okay. Me, too. I'll, Justin said it's spoken I, first. Yep, I'm, I'm going gonna have, I'm gonna have it more broad because there's okay. there's a lot to it, but barbecue. Mm, barbecue's good. Good answer. We're from the Midwest. Gotta have barbecue on there. Yeah. Okay, well, with this question, smell is very linked to memory, so I think we I need a memory good. that goes along with it. Okay. Is there? Yeah. If, if if you can think of something that, like, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's your favorite. Smells. Um, I think mine would probably be, um, so uh, Austin, um, and, and Brendan, um, you guys came to a party shortly after I got my new house, and I made some pulled pork with the tater tots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I remember that, that. That I think was my the best pulled pork, and I think. A big part of it was the way it smelled. Mm -hmm. So that would be mine. I'd love a good pulled pork. Uh, not to interrupt, but I think that was that's good. Uh, I want to bring up Nicholas. Oh no, that was answer. the end of mine. Okay, perfect. Nicholas said in a British accent, "My favorite smell is just baked cookies or freshly cut grass." And then he said, "For sound, it would have to be hiat hiat hiagia." <laughs> so. All right. All the sounds that Link makes. <laughs> uh, I I feel like I have a generic smell one too, but like fall scented candles, like pumpkin spice mm -hmm. okay. or like 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 uh, apple cinnamon, like all the ones that are associated with like that is just the best. Like I get those candles year round, because it's like yeah, fresh linen is fine, but you know it's better all the time. Yeah. Apple cinnamon and pumpkin like pumpkin pie and I was just ah oh, man just the best. Valid. Uh, yeah. So that's where that's where I'm at for favorite smell. In fact, I might go light a candle right now. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, around, around, light a light a I'm, I'm curious. Brendan, can you guess mine? Ooh. Can I guess Husband. Mine? Ooh. Ooh. No, I don't <laughs> He didn't you know what? Even that, try. that might be no. safer though, because if you guess wrong, it could be so wrong that you'd lose points. But now oh, you're saying neutral. It's coffee. It's got to be coffee. Coffee's part of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you can guess another part too. If coffee's uh, part of it, you got to get the other part. It's Redeemer. It's a two-part smell. Is it? Yeah. Is it a bakehouse? Are we? Are we going to redeem? No, it? it's not. It's not a two-part smell. I feel like like I also like puppy breath, which I know is like very like oh. just a um, meat thing, but puppy breath flavored coffee. <laughs> I don't. Weird. I. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I do. It's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Not everyone here will agree with that, but that that is true for you. But yes, like freshly roasted coffee is definitely one of them. That coffee, is good smell. fall, and barbecue. Okay. Anyone what about? Else? Yeah, we got mine is so when we were in um england Ooh. we went to that what was it harrods and i With bought harrods. perfume and it's not it's not a very like it wasn't very fancy and it wasn't very british it was that sol de janeiro like 
Cheerios is 62. Looks like a very common smell. You can get it at any Sephora in the United States. And um, I... That one's different. Like, Special. But I associate... Like, I bought it at the first leg of our trip. And then Jeez. I wore it every day when we were in... Nice. Europe, basically. And yep. so I very much associate that now with mm. that month trip. So that's mm. my favorite smell right now. But I also like, I don't know, nice. like Franken. I like earthy smells usually, like. Um, like dirt. Oh, mus like musky smells. Like Josh. Like for perfume and stuff like mm. that, yeah. That's funny. I'm, I'm burning a musk incense right now. Yeah, I like, like musk incense or um, a a tobacco. Like tobacco and mm. clove and like rich, deep scents. Mahogany? Oh, okay. Mahogany, teak wood. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. Smells of rich mahogany. Oh, teak, though. thank you. <laughs> More of an oak. I'm very nice to but like rain. When I was Ooh. little, when I was younger, I used mm -hmm. to love walking past the Abercrombie and Fitch because like that fierce, like that classic Abercrombie and Fitch. Oh, I like for their tight jeans and their little six packs. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Uh, what was the other one? Hollister? Hollister, yeah. <laughs> Those, uh, like, tight jeans. stereotypical oh, masculine colognes, I do really like the smell of. Just uh, Dylan and Josh? Yeah? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite smell, Josh? Those two. And Brendan, I guess. Uh, Sorry, I forget yeah. that you're a part of this. <laughs> um, I'm not. Oh, okay. I just saw the Josh. I would probably say my favorite smell is the smell of my homemade cinnamon rolls. Oh. That's fair. Oh, yeah. You do make some good cinnamon rolls. Well, you made them today. I saw it. For nice. Thanksgiving, so. Very nice. I had one as soon as I got home. Even I did. Yeah. For Thanksgiving. You can't have one today. That's why Josh oh. always makes two pans of them. He makes one <laughs> pan for Pretty whatever events. event they're for, and well, then he the makes a second pan that's our pan. Yeah, I see. He's, He's got like, auxiliary cinnamon rolls. I see. Mr. President, the second pan has hit the oven. <laughs> that's true. What about Dylan? Um, so my my sense of smell needs a bit of a backstory. <laughs> um, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Uh, a bit of my childhood was spent in rooms uh, with smokers and oh, cigarettes. Uh, well, I already relate to what um, you're saying. I already yeah. relate. Yeah, so, nostalgic smell well, so while, yes, that smell is nostalgic, um, it did hamper my ability to smell. Uh -huh. And then, on top of this, this also leaned into my favorite smell. Uh, I was a martial artist uh, throughout my childhood uh -huh. and was... Uh, hit in the nose quite a few times i have a cracked nose it's a bit askew at the moment um but that also affected my sense of smell and so right now i can't really smell all that much um but what i can smell um is stale sweat which is probably <laughs> my favorite smell at the moment there you go Okay. Do you is... know you did need a backstory for that otherwise it would have been weird yes. i appreciate yeah. that <laughs> you knew the audience so i appreciate it that's good I thought you were about to say that you have a poor sense of smell because when you were like 11 years old, some lawyer hit you with his truck while you were riding your bike. <laughs> I was like, wow, it's weird that it's happened to two people. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'd only have two nickels, but it's weird yeah. that it happened twice. No, but I was getting hit in the head around that same time. So. That's true. That's fair. Yeah. It was just more gradual. It was a lot yeah, less it than was. all at once. Yep. Yeah, no, I feel like... Uh... All right, that's it. Yeah, that's probably everybody. Sounds good. No, um, mine would probably be, I don't know. I could say something super basic, like clean laundry or it's not basic. like, you know, like that Whatever fresh it is, cotton man. smell. Clean linen. Like, but Nichols, Nichols was right. Chocolate chip cookies in the, like coming out of the oven is, is a good. He did say that was supposed to be an obscure sure. reference to Harry Potter and his actual favorite smell is vanilla. Mm, yeah. That's a good yeah, I feel like... But chocolate chip cookies is a solid answer. Yeah. And also has vanilla in it. True. True. Where's your text? But I'd probably also say, like, if I could recapture exactly how it smelled, like going to the lake 
during the summer and like boating a whole bunch it was like that combination mm. of smells but not when the lake was like super fishy or like smelled super bad but just like that particular like set of things that takes me back that would be cool but i don't know if they bottle that specifically yeah it, it's it's more about the trifecta like when there's like leaves are out and it's kind of cold outside and there's a bonfire like that combination uh, of smells, you know? i changed my answer bonfire while I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> while I'm drunk. So you have yeah. a specific... Uh, s- I think so. I assume so. I don't usually remember, but I assume it that that's... It smells different when he's also holding a tree above his head, too. Yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah. it's the smell of campfire when there's at least eight people by the campfire. It just hits different, you know? All their yep. B.O. mixing together. Sure. Hey, Brendan, this, this is, is a really good question, because this really does the tell us what of line you need that makes the campfire smell good. Yeah. <laughs> it is a good question. The memory part, yeah. Yeah, the, I mean, the, the smell being linked to memory, it's a good question because it makes you think about, like, what oh, you yeah. like no, to remember. No, I think that you say that, the though, Dylan, because I've described many times where I'm like, I love the smell of cigarette smoke, not because I've ever smoked, but because my family has, and it's very yeah. nostalgic, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. It makes me think, when I smell cigarette smoke, I think of, like, bars and parties, which are usually good times, but I don't like the <laughs> smell in general because it's like, cigarette smoke makes my asthma act up, so it's just like, yeah. this makes me think of being hard of breathing, but also having a good time. <laughs> we all know my toxic trait, so I love the smell of cigarettes. <laughs> we talked about that earlier with Nicholas. We can also, uh, you know, the, do you or do you not like the smell of gas, like at gas stations? Like, I feel like that's very polarizing oh, as well. I yeah. don't like that smell. Not a lot, because yeah. it starts to give you a headache, but like a little bit. Like, you know, you, the first time you smell it, good. And then, like, the third yeah. time, it's just like, I need oxygen now. What I love is the mix of the smell of the gas station with the mix of the smell of the cigarette, because that and means... bonfire, explosion. <laughs> That's a good time. <laughs> that means I changed my chance. answer. Pumpkin we, spice. That's the last thing you'll ever smell. Yeah, <laughs> you really appreciate life that smell. And we along with the smell of burning hair, that's just the bam, bam, bam. It's the smell of an evening. Rapid succession, all those things. The, that you don't my, smell the business super combo. My my weird smell that I enjoy is tires. Ooh, I, I do oh, like a new tire rubber. smell. Yeah, 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 it's good. Like a new or no, like no, walking into like a Goodyear or yes. something, or like a place where they sell the tires. Yeah. You just walk in, it's like yeah, I yeah, yeah. And you know what? My actual uh, favorite smell is though, cave mules. Oh no. Cave mules. Oh, oh. Like that transition? Oh, I'm going to, all right, here we go. I was going to say, yeah. one of my favorite smells is like... The barn? The barn. Not puppy breath, like but full breath. Wet horse. Yes. Wet full horse is a very particular smell. Foals, yeah. Full breath. Full horses. Okay. I'm telling you, it's just like, I don't know, the babies put off a different smell. No, that's true. Yankee Candle just released a new smell. It's called Gas Station Bonfire. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'm loving it. You see how many people we had in chat today? There's yeah, like we had. A, I feel like we got raided four. momentarily. We had like nine people in here at once. Yeah, we, there's like three. We have four, four new followers names. today. Shout out Spartan, Africanism, Taste the Febreze, and Rev 0004. Appreciate yeah. you. All right, let's go save some Agdenar. Ogdenars. Yeah. yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Ogdenars. And that's down okay. in deep deep the deep one right the depths yeah yeah I or is so. it uh stone breach i thought it was on the third level yeah i thought it was on stone breach stone breach oh, you're okay. right it's yeah. a, the stone, stone breach. breach okay cool yep so Good you're gonna head down uh two levels and go to uh this ogdenar ranch um you you know you were told that the guy who runs it is a dwarf uh by the name of ektar beatsmith Um, and the the branch is called the House of Six Nails. Can anyone here tell me why it's called that? I feel like this is an actual question that maybe people would know. The House of Six Nails. Mm-hmm. I is assume any it has some between six nails. I have something about putting in like horseshoes or something. Us. Maybe something to do with the amount of nails going in a horseshoe. Yeah, there's six nails and a horseshoe. That's what I was thinking, usually. And I got it. Uh, Austin, I'm so proud of you. Austin said it first, but I think uh, think he was mostly guessing. But yes, yeah, there's there's six nails and a horseshoe. Educated guess. 
That works. Where do we know where roughly it is on this map? If you had to guess, um, I don't think it's on the map, but definitely not. Let's see. It's okay. Oh. I just realized how big the Pearl Class Clan Hall is, and the dr I think is it's gonna be. So sixteen is the Gelderon Green, which I think is like uh, like Clan Gelderon is like farmers, um, and and like and. Um, Ektar Beatsmith is a member of that same clan, so I think he would probably be somewhere in that 16 area. You see, like okay. 16 and yeah. 18 are like kind of like off by them, so it'd be like yeah. over in that region of the, the, the oh, city. Yeah. So, uh, so you guys head down there, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, this little farm. We'll we'll show you what it kind of what it looks like. Uh, uh, travel locations. Let me see. No, and we're gonna go to New map? an actual map. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Called the House of Six Nails. I see it. I'm on my way. Oops. I don't see it. Me neither. I I. Jump oh, the gun go. and clicked select map in the top right before Brendan drew oh, us there. Oh, I know. Um, so there's a number of of Algenars kind of here, kind of like... Uh, I haven't loaded up quite yet. Not that it matters. You can still talk. Sorry, I was rude. Yeah, no, you're fine. It's just like, they're in a little paddock out, out front, but there's just a couple of large buildings. Um, and then this uh, the, the, the rancher named Ektar Beatsmith. And it comes out to greet you guys. You kind of come up. Well, we are getting He's some. Like okay. Leaning there's on some, the fence a little there's bit. There's areas we're not supposed to be able to see, correct? Yeah, there's inside the buildings. I think we can, like. Oh, yeah, drag us around. A, okay, a cool. Quick tour. Okay, look at these. Look at these good boys. White Ogdenar. Creature. 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 Look at Ektar Beatsmith. He is an Ogdenar farmer. I can tell by the way he is. Mm -hmm. So he kind of like he's kind of like leaning up against the fence. Like he's got maybe a, a piece of straw or something. He's in his mouth. He's kind of shooting oh, on, and he kind of like, oh, piece of straw or something. He's uh kind of waves at you. If it's so good enough for him, up. it's good enough for yeah. the donkeys. Hey, you must be Ekt or Ektar, eh? Yes, yeah, me. I go. We uh. Heard from uh, uh, someone up top that I can't remember her name right now that you might be having a a problem, supernatural maybe, uh, with the your old Ogdenars here. Uh, we're here you to help. Right down, right down to it, aren't you? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, it seems like a pretty serious issue, and it's starting to get late, and so we we're here to help. I even brought a druid. Yeah, good with animals. Well. Yeah, I bought this place a few weeks or a few months back uh, from Karia to Faga. You know, she's a, a real legend among breeders. Uh, you know, the Algonar type. And then she recently <laughs> retired. I figured it was my time to strike it up rich, ranching Algonars. You know, we're Gelderon folks, so we keep these properties in the clan when we can. So she gave it to me at a fair price just a few months back, which seemed like a pretty good deal. Now, uh, and he kind of like kicks the fence and he's like, ah, it's been hell. It has. Someone's been out here breaking fences, hiding my tools, messing with the mules, and making a goddamn mess of things out here. He's like, much as I keep watch out here, I haven't been able to catch no vandals in action. I tried calling in my family to help. And they all politely declined, like I'm some kind of pariah. I just need some kind of investigation. Now, I do have some money set aside to make it worth your while. Hi. What, what sort of things have been happening to the Ogmenars, and how thorough of a watch have you done? Well, I'm only one man, but I, I've been out here and I watched it overnight, so I watched it during the days, and it just always seems to happen when I ain't around. So now, uh, I've asked some people to keep an eye out, just check up eye once in a while, and 
we never see anything happen, but the Algonars will be out, just kind of roaming around like someone's opening up the gates. I've had the fence post smashed a couple times so they can get out. I've had someone spook them up right good. They've come back with, like, nicks and scratches on them. I said, I don't know what the deal is. Would you mind if we took a look around, yeah? Oh, yeah, no, you're, you're just welcome. Check out the... Uh, it's just got the workshop over here, and I got the barn. It said uh, you go in and out either one of them. Take a take a look, see. Yeah, I don't know what kind of check it would be, but maybe look around and see if there's anything obvious. Like obviously, like if there's still stuff that's smashed, could we tell how it was smashed? If there's stuff that's broken, like if there's nicks and stuff on the Ogdenars, we check out if we could tell possibly what or you know who. Not not necessarily who, but like. A creature like a person did it uh just like a general like there's not investigation but something of that nature is there different different checks that you have that we could probably roll to learn different things yeah so uh so you, you mentioned a lot of different ideas um but are we probably looking at like nature checks perception checks medicine um survival just let me know like specifically like kind of what you're looking for i have a. Uh... 23 perception check. Okay. I would like to evaluate the mules and see, like, I guess, do they seem disturbed? Do they seem restless? Do they have any injuries that look like it should, they were like, um, what's the word? Nefarious? Mm -mm. I think they're super disturbed. In fact, they look to be down with the sickness. Okay, thank you. Gotcha. Nice. Wow. Nice. <laughs> Get this boy a drop. Yeah, so, uh, so I think... Get this so boy think, a drop. I, uh, Orpheus has got... He's, he's, you know, walking, walking up here, taking a look around, kind of looking at, at the animals, and you see, like, it looks like uh, a majority of the animals here have all kind of, like, congregated together, um, and they're kind of, like, acting a little bit skittish. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's... They're, they're all signaling that they're alert, basically. You know, it's like, you know, ears forward every once in a while, like, hey, take a look around. Um, like, they're watching to see what's 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 going on kind of warily. Um, and no one's threatening them. You know, like, no one's really, like, near the, the paddock, and, like, nobody's, like, uh, doing anything that would make them kind of act that way. But they're all being a little bit, a little bit suspicious. But there is one um, a mostly white Ogdenar that's kind of, like, all by itself. And it's like if it tries to come over and socialize with the others, like they'll all immediately move to the far end of the paddock and like stay away from it. It's like finding Can, Nemo. Because they uh, earlier mentioned that they thought it might be supernatural um, of some nature. Can I do actually, Brendan? Can you do an esoteric roll for me with a plus six? Because I get a plus six for haunts. And all creatures, and it's something else too, but something of that nature. Haunts, curses, and creatures of any type with a plus six. To see right. if I. Maybe six, I, I. Or you have an additional plus six. I have a plus six in general, just like esoteric lore is oh. a plus six. So, like, maybe I try to get near or just, you know, get as close to the white uh, Ogdenar as I can, pull out some of my esoteric stuff and see if I can sense anything um, from a distance that might. Uh, 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 you know, ascertain if it's if it's cursed or something like that. So, uh, so while Kroon is walking around, like scattering corn on the ground, he's like, hey, hey. <laughs> he's trying uh -huh. to figure out what's going on over there. Uh, but uh, it doesn't look like he's figuring out a whole lot. Um, while he's doing that, that okay. can I walk up to the white Ognar? Yeah, and um, I'm going to do druid abilities. Go. Um, a nature check to command animal. Okay. My dice real quick. <laughs> That'll be a 26. Yep. So yeah, so I think you would have no problem, uh, you know, walking right up to the Ogdenar, you know, you, you know, uh, how to behave around, um, an equine. So, uh, so you kind of walk up, and it and it kind of like comes up to you, kind of glad almost that um, someone's as willing to interact with it. Um, and in doing so, you see that um, 
it looks like uh like it's got like some welts and like cuts on its legs like all of its extremities like nothing higher up on the horse um but it does have like wounds like lower down uh, kind of closer to the ground um and uh and it's it's particularly haggard like it's like this one hasn't been eating well and as i like tufts of hair missing like something's torn out its hair um and like in like these like half healed lacerations uh it looks like it's been it's been trying to get out of the paddock um sometimes and it's it's like bruised and like and cut itself um and the rest of the, them do not have any lesions like that, I'm guessing. The other, the other Ogdenars, uh, I mean, like, uh, taking a quick look at them, it seems like they do have, like, you know, like, little sores or welts, maybe, but nothing near as, as extreme as this white Ogdenar has. Um, so does anybody else have any ideas what yeah, they want to try? Say, I've already done my check. I can't really do a whole Can lot. I do an arcana check to see if there's maybe, like, can detect any magical auras that might be coming from the Ogdenar that is, like, giving off bad vibes or something? Yeah, I mean, you could definitely that makes try. Sense. Mm -hmm. Um... Arcana plus three, not, uh, I got a 19 total. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just from looking around, like, outside, um, you don't really see anything that looks, like, magical in nature. Like, you know, the animals seem stressed, and, uh, but, like, it doesn't look like, um, Ektar is capable of doing any magic, you know? Like, he seems like a pretty simple farmer, like, so he's probably not doing anything magical around here, and there doesn't look like to be any other traces of it. Um... I, I, can't I was remember. gonna. Was, I was think occultism a part of your list? Or no? um, uh, mainly, it was. I was talking about like uh, nature, perception, medicine. If you want to check out the horses, um, you could percept uh, inside too. We haven't gone inside horse, these two places. Horse so. survival would be good too. Like if you're looking for like tracks or things of that nature. Okay. Um. um I'd like to talk to the the farmer. Okay. Um, just kind of ask. Uh, he goes, "Holy hell!" Oh, uh, yep. I'm kind of things down. <laughs> yeah, I just I mosey on over to him. Uh, I pick up a a, a tiny uh, piece of straw, put it in my mouth, just to ingratiate myself. <laughs> um, and just, I just like, ask plainly, <laughs> like, uh, so do you, do you have any? Uh, farm hands you had to let go as of recently anyone that might maybe hold a grudge w hold a grudge that's, yes, thank that's you. what the dragon said good call well i i don't uh, i don't it's a pretty small operation out here he said i've only got about what is it like 26 Ogdenar to take care of he said i do have a few uh uh, you know, he's my, you know, my wife and my my son helped me out he, around here. He said, but we really don't have a lot of hired help. He said, and, and the ones we do, I figure we treat we treat pretty well. And are you the only uh, stable here in the city, or do you and, perhaps uh, have any uh, uh, rivals? Well, yeah, no, 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 of course not. He said, there's all kinds of our stables up and down the whole. Whole district, he said, but uh, he said Karia's was one of the most popular. Uh, she certainly had a, a dedicated crowd to uh, to her critters, and uh, and they, uh, you know, we got some of the best stock out here. He says, and uh, I suppose you know there could be uh, other operations out there that's wanting to harm us in some way or another. He says, but uh, I don't, nobody specific. I thought it'd probably just be local kids causing troubles. That's why I stayed up a few nights just to watch and see for myself, but I've never seen anybody, anybody uh, out here, even though somebody's got into my shed and messed things up real proper. He you says, are... the he said, they'll take care of themselves. He says, they, uh, they're mean critters, you know? You get behind them, you're going to get kicked. <laughs> and uh, not too many people's coming back from that. You're going to get kicked. Well, it's, 
You are killing it with sounds the accent, like a... by the way. <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. That was the character to Brendan. Yep. I reckon. Um. Y'all. Y'all. I don't think I'm li or a bit able to roll another check, but I think after he couldn't get a close to the white mule, Wakarun would be walking around to, and trying to get inside of these other places that he mentioned. So, and it looks like maybe Angoric is up here with me to help check it out potentially and actually be able to roll a check. Someone showing you what the inside looks like? Nope. He saw black. Why? I don't know. I, I am Can I also over. roll for survival to like see if there's anything that he could have gotten hung up on that would cause the, all these lesions on his legs? Yeah, you can definitely roll for survival. I can see now. You can? Okay. Uh, no, when I get inside, I can't. I can only see this little... Like this area right here, unless there's other doors inside. I it's rolled like an 18. Here and here. How about now? Who's looking? Okay. And when I'm inside, I can only see this area here. Yeah, that's what I see as well. You could. Oh, wait, I can. Uh, I guess I need to put this on stream. My bad, guys. You could peep this bit if you want to see what I can see on the stream. If I just remove everything on that thing, if you can. I don't understand why it's not just... Well, whatever, I'll just... And Gorik, are you uh, having trouble seeing in here, like some sort of mysterious darkness? I think we found the cause of all of our problems right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I'm having I, the same issues. I think a part of the, uh, of the of uh, the shadow plane has uh, has entered this area. Our our friend Orpheus may be able to have more luck as uh, they are weird and from the shadow area, but they can't hear me. So I hope this doesn't impact the way that they think about me later on. Oh, Orpheus, hey, how how are you? Oh, hey, hey, how? Oh, <laughs> hi. Uh, 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 do you think you could get rid of the shadow plane that's going on here? I don't know. I seem to be moving on my own, like some sort of god is like, but not well, god, but like, but like, us, but like god <laughs> above all of our normal gods is is taking control of us. Oh Jesus Christ! It's gone. We can see. <laughs> my God! But there seems to be some sort oh. of dark circle emanating here now, and I don't know yeah. why that is. Oh, look at all these tools. Thank it's, you. Uh, it's a. I put the light spell on myself, since technically I still have the light spell on. Uh, I can't okay. even get in there, Your light though. spell seems to me making everything one shade darker, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but... Uh, may I roll a, so another guys. perception check while I'm inside of uh, here? Yeah. I can't even yeah, I can't even see inside this place. Sarah rolled for survival. So you would know, Sarah, like, looking around, that it's kind of like the... The pins kind of got, like, some, like, soft sand. Um, so you'd normally be able to get quite a few tracks. Unfortunately, there are horses here, so they kind of like make tracks everywhere, like le left, right, center, like all around. Um, Is there uh, gates you... here? Sorry, I mean to interrupt. Are there like gates blocking these? Think, but these are the I two entrances. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just making sure. Um, but you, so you're kind of looking around, and looking for you know like like spots in the fence, and it, like you know he told you some of it's been tampered with. Um, and in one of the spots, of the gate uh, that's been it's been like it's, you know he said it's been removed, like you know torn off its hinges several times or like loosened and like left open and things like that um you see like mixed in with all the hoof prints there's a set of tiny footprints looks like a like a like a small or tiny creature um, where is this again kind of, here uh, in the in the paddock in the paddock okay where we're wait where we're oh in the paddock okay over by where sarah's at okay gotcha over here so uh so yeah so it's like uh there's there's footprints and they kind of like go around and like kind of like you know like they, maybe they were they were walking around with some of the animals, um, and they look like they kind of lead back to the barn. Mm -hmm. And this is like a door that goes into the barn. Oh, this is a door that goes into the barn actually. Okay, sick. Um, I would like to knock on the door, and then listen to see if there's any response, and then open it and try to go in. 
Okay, yeah, no, if you, if you, if you knock, he, you know, he's like, hey, there's no one else here but me right now. You can go on in. Um, and so you go inside, and this is, this looks like a, a workshop. Um, there's, there's tools for grooming, cleaning, and feeding livestock. Um, there's a small furnace suitable for heating and shaping horseshoes with a modest stockpile of coal and iron bars. Um, and, and it looks like despite his best efforts, this workshop is in complete disarray. There are tools and, and, and items thrown everywhere all around, um, from, from like this latest, whatever, uh, you know, prank was pulled here or whatever, whatever spirit or, you know, poltergeist that he thinks he has is bothering him. Um, there's, there's, uh, noteworthy damage includes some bags of spilled grain. Um, there are a dozen iron bars, like just the raw iron, just like shoved into the furnace. So you can't even like get it lit or get coal inside of it. Um, and there are tools like hidden and underneath things and in various places are just thrown, like scattered about and there's damaged furniture. There's like a stool with a broken leg and there's like, Wait it looks like chunks have been taken out of the, the table and everything. Nice. It's all very well represented on the map, actually. Very nice. Can I do a perception check for like any secret? Secret tunnel. Like secret tunnel. passageways in the floor or the wall or any hidden anything? Yeah, so you could do. I would let you. I'd say you could do perception or thievery. Um, we in general can just tell that it's in disarray, right? Oh yeah. So it's, if Walker would saw that while she's rolling that, he would ask the Ektar. I go, is this uh is this a room always uh such in disarray as it is now, or is that part of the problem that you've been experiencing? I'll come down and talk to you. And he kind of, you know, he slowly, <laughs> slowly like walks over to where you are. He's, okay, let's see. And go. he's like, hey, there's no need in a shouting. He's, uh, he says, what were you asking? Is, is this uh, workshop always in such uh, uh, disarray? It looks like there's a, I don't want to be rude and say it's a mess, but there is a, there is a, a lack of organization in this room. Is it always like that? Or is that a part of the problem that you've been experiencing? Yeah, hell, we just talked about this. I told you there's something out here messing with all my buildings. Mm -hmm. Just making sure so I, I just... Let's get my facts straight. This place was in is in perfect working order yesterday. Right. All right. Is anything missing? Or do you have anything being stolen? Well, could you tell something was missing in there? Look around. It's a fucking disaster. <laughs> well, I, I realize, but there's all the stuff there. I, uh, it's well, just... I'm, I'm, yeah, it looks like most of, most of it's been there. Some of it's broken. All right. Don't have to get me a new lathe. All right. All right. Well, my what? friend uh, Orpheus is in there uh, uh, as a... Voice. In his ear, uh, uh, telling him to to keep uh, the expletives to a minimum and to please lower his voice. I, Holy I don't... shit! <laughs> <laughs> I rolled a twenty-one thievery. Nice, okay. nice. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, Orpheus kind of gets it, goes inside and looks around. Um, yeah, as far as you can tell, there aren't any passages that go anywhere. I mean, it looks like it's a pretty simple simply constructed building. Um, you do look around and kind of assess the damage that's in there. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like there's like the, some, of, some of the stools and tables look like they've got gashes from like a, just a short blade. You know, someone just striking it over and over again with something sharp. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's uh, they've got gouges in them that are pretty deep. So it's like it's some it's someone's strong. being someone, someone strong did it, but also you know, they had no intention of height. So I had no intention of hiding what they were doing. I mean, you can't really tell that, I don't think. Um, the, okay. the grain bags look like they were slashed open and then uh, completely overturned. So someone picked up this entire bag of grain, you know, probably weighed 50, 60 pounds or whatever, you know, it's yeah. heavy bag. Um, and they tossed them. And then, and then it does look like, uh, you know, like, you know, assessing the place is like, well, yeah, there's there's some 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 tools you'd expect to be here that are missing. Ektar, uh, when all the oh, Jesus Christ, when all the damage happened here, did you? Uh, was that one of the nights that you were sitting out watching the place, or was this uh, yes, before or yes. after? So you uh, were watching out all night, and then you checked it out in the morning, and it was destroyed, but you didn't see anything happen. Exactly. That's so why. I, so that's kind of maybe what you thought it might be something paranormal or something that you couldn't see, eh? Yeah, you, you talk real fast. I didn't even get a chance to, to say it myself. But yeah, I do. Okay. I do think that that's a... I, I don't know. I, I have my eyes on the place and never saw a soul go in or out. So 
Only other thing I think it reckon it could be is a uh, spirit. Aye, okay. Uh, That's why spirit would want to mess with me and my ranch. I, I got no worldly idea. Walkroon's going to go, like, kind of just sit over to the side and, like, pull out his bag and start, like, reading through some of, like, some, like, books and stuff that he has to see if he can find anything on something similar to this. But I, uh, Austin has an idea of what we should do, but I'm going to let everyone else continue investigating stuff because we haven't even checked out this barn. But I kind of think that setting up for an evening to watch to see if we can catch whatever's happening happen is kind of what's uh, on Walkroon's mind. But I'm I'm good with my investigation so far. I'll let anyone else... Yeah, so keep in thing. mind that you guys can attempt checks again if you want to do checks inside because you guys weren't, weren't, weren't investigating over here. Yeah, yeah, I might go inside so, and do another uh, survival check, I guess. I gotta so yeah, yeah, have, like, the time to take a 20 on some of these checks, too, with the fact that, like, there's probably not any imminent danger or anything. I think there's weird rules on take 20 for some thumb things like this, I'd imagine. So I don't know uh, if you could take 20 on, like, investigation yeah, checks necessarily i don't even know if that's a concept that exists in second edition oh i don't think they've done it yet in the gcp since they've uh, moved over to 2e i googled it and read it the top comment on the post that says can you take a 10 or 20 in 2e the top comment says no there's the assurance feat, but it's terrible and requires a feat. It's effectively taking five. No, highly trained craftsman will fail five percent of the time he tries to make a simple item. Highly trained item. These be unrealistically good. Okay then. I mean, that's not yeah, the that's not the end all be all, yeah. but yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I will say that uh, we do have hero points, so everybody has a hero point at the start of every yeah. session. So uh, you can spend that to to roll two dice and yeah, take the better result. My vision is still really messed up in this game. And I don't know what's going on. Yeah, this whole corner is cut off now, Brendan, here. Like this triangle for I, me. Yeah, I, I couldn't tell you why it's happening. I have no idea. I think we've been everywhere. If we could somehow just remove the vision on this map at this point. If that's not a possibility, I get it. But I, I don't know how map tools works on the back end. There we go. I can see everything now. I don't know if everybody can, but I can. Grazie. Uh, yeah, walk uh, through to walk inside, yeah. I guess, after he's kind of read through his book, and just do, like, a so walk through all the way, and then do a, this time, a survival check. Um, just to see, he, like, he's looking, I, I, well, actually, I guess my first assumption here is, uh, Huang, did you share that you saw these tiny footprints? What did, what did, what, what, what did you share the, with what you found over there? Three six. Thievery. Thievery? Okay, I'm going to roll. Thievery. Is it good enough to keep this place? Um, okay, so that for me, for a survival check, when we're underground in a cave, so that's a plus one, so that's a plus five, is a 21. And mostly looking for tracks yeah. of anything, uh, with the idea being that maybe I can set up some, like, happen? not, like, esoteric, like, I am thinking... <laughs> I'm in my head. It's like um, uh, phasmophobia. Like set up salt lines. I want to set up salt lines at these different entrances. So if something walks through them, we'd be able to mm -hmm. see it or know in the morning or something along those lines. So I'm looking for tracks or different places that might be valuable to set up some sort of a not surveillance, obviously, because we don't have like technology like that, but some sort of trap or a visual to be able to see things that maybe come in the evening to to cause damage. That's kind of what I'm it's looking like for. The fact that you played that game so much is like really like useful in this yeah, scenario. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think. Uh, so I think you you know you said you're taking a, kind of another look around uh, uh -huh. the survival check inside 21. the workshop. Um, uh, yeah. Is so... this no inside the the stable? Right. Oh, is you're going the... the stable now. Yeah, yeah. I've walked. I want to walk all the, the way barn. through the yeah the barn. Excuse me. Yeah, I want to walk all the way through it, just kind of looking for different uh, things okay. to see through here. Okay, so you know, nobody's been in the barn yet, really. But yeah. uh, so we'll say, so it's designed for housing and training horses. Um, the stable itself looks like it's been partly renovated. Many of the inner walls have been knocked out while the columns remain, creating a more open space for Ogdenars to shelter in small groups when they're not grazing outside High Hemp. So uh, the ground floor has over a foot of compacted soil sitting on top of, you know, the cave rock. 
Uh -huh. So there's a lot. There's a good, good, chip, good amount of soil there. Um, it's got scattered with straw and droppings. Um, apparently, Ektar's too tired to have cleaned up this place before he asked for investigators to come through. Rude. Rude. Uh, I think we're live. We're back. I think. I hope. Power went out. Weird blip in the video. Oh, yep. There, there we, we go. go. All righty. All right. Got to get go. an ad. Let's go back to the map. Jesus Christ, right. three ads. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. All right, uh, yeah, so I was just telling you about what the barn looks like. Um, yeah. So, again, like, you know, it's they've got um, an open space for Ogdenars to shelter in small groups. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, soil floor inside here, but they've got um, straw and then apparently Ogdenar droppings that Ektar hasn't cleaned up yet, some of which have been smeared on the ceiling at the, at the, in, at the far end of the barn. At the near end of the barn is a hayloft that has, kind of has a partial second floor, um, but the ladder looks like it's been smashed to pieces by these 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 uh, vandals. So you're gonna either have to fashion a new way up there or just climb up. Um. Okay. So again, what? we're kind of looking for some of those checks that you guys have been making. You know, the perception, survival, thievery. You could also do arcana, occultism, or perception in here. Um, I'm gonna and use then... my bottle cap for uh, an occultism check. Okay. Try and get a I mean, one. if we, I think the bottle cap have... you don't have to use beforehand, right? Like you, you roll it before you know the result. Before if you result. think, then you can use it. So like, you don't have to use it yet in case you do roll well. Like, there's no reason to like say it before. Wait, you. really? Yeah. Uh, -oh. uh, if we have time, uh, could I just build okay. something to get up? Uh, yeah, you can do using... check. Cool. I uh. This ladder, if we could put it back together, I think it might be worth getting up there and checking the loft out. Yeah, that's a 23 for occultism. Okay, yeah, you think that's plenty good enough. Um, uh, uh, spend it any time that requires an action to use. You cannot spend more than one hero points. I might be thinking of a different type of rule set now that I think about it. This. I think this is for Pathfinder First Edition. No, I think you're right, actually, Austin. I think it's bef uh, after you make the check, but before you know the result. Right. Spend a hero point to reroll a check. You must use the second result. You must use the second result. Oh. But okay. would you roll it, though? It doesn't say. Yeah, so, but based on that, you're not going to roll twice and take the... You wouldn't do it beforehand, because... You would have to be after you make the roll if you're going to take the second right. roll, right? You know. So I don't do it at the same time. But I I, I, it's up to you, Brett. Like bad. it's however we want to play it. What what rules do you do you want to implement by the rule book rules for hero points, or do you want something different? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I mean, I guess we're gonna have to. I could go. I'll, I'll look, look around. Look into it. We'll, yeah, we'll we'll look into it a little bit in between sessions and talk about mm -hmm. it. But twenty three. Uh, twenty three for yeah for all intents and purposes that's a that's a success for sure at least on this one. So I'll tell you that um, so you're kind of looking around looking for anything that might be out of the ordinary you know supernatural, um, and 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 it looks like um, like so the Ogdenar droppings were like smeared across like the wall and the ceiling, um, and so you know that either somebody was able to fly up there and do that. Um, or someone very tall. Or, or someone uses telekinesis uh, to, to, mm. to, to move the, the droppings without having to be able to actually get up there. Okay, I'm going to use, I'm gonna use uh, Mage Hand to smear some of the droppings onto the ceiling, see if I can get it to look mm. like that and see if okay. that's it, accurate. Yeah, so you just do a quick Mage Hand, smear some more droppings in the ceiling, and you see Ektar kind of come in the barn and kind of close the door again and just <laughs> shake his head. But, uh, yeah, so... Uh, it almost looks exactly like uh, the first uh, set of droppings smeared on the wall. Almost exactly. So what did I get wrong? <laughs> yeah, you think if you tried it a few more times, you'd probably get it just right. That is the scientific theory. Your mm -hmm. <laughs> point is to say you must re-roll a check. So that makes me think you roll it, and then afterwards you get to use it. Yeah, I think so. I, okay. think you, I think you'd use it and then re-roll it. It's not it. like advantage. It's a re-roll. So. Separate system, separate roll systems. Yeah. Um, uh, anybody else want to take a look in the barn? Did I get anything more than just like the general information from my survival check? I got a twenty-one inside here, specifically looking for like places to 
like I said, like my idea is to set up not traps, but like some sort of way to identify mm -hmm. if things are coming through this like salt salt sure. lines stuff like that like anything that might be yeah. valuable so i think you'd be looking through here and you'd see that ektar has kind of done similar things you know like he's tried to set up stuff that'll like trip somebody coming in and like make noise yeah um and in addition to these like you know rat traps and things that he's kind of got yeah um uh, laying out and it looks like um a number of them have been triggered unsuccessfully like somebody's went through and like disarmed all of these traps maybe like you know, they were able to do so safely without triggering them. Okay. I'm assuming that everyone is sharing all this information. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Walk Walkeroon's walking around and he's just like, "Hi, I thought about setting up some sort of salt lines or trip wires or something like that, but from the looks of things, it looks like uh, old Ektar has maybe done that uh, unsuccessfully. Uh, it does look like whatever is coming in here is." Uh, some form of intelligence as it's uh, disarming the traps or avoiding them somehow. Uh, so I don't know if that's the route we should go, but uh, to be honest, I don't know what the route is. Uh, it looks like uh, old Elnats might be uh, trying to craft a way up into the the top of this building. Maybe we'll find some more information up there. It doesn't look like uh, uh, Ektar has been up there necessarily yet, so hopefully we'll learn something valuable. Yeah, so uh, do you want to roll a crafting check on that? Sure. Uh, I got a uh, 19 total. 19 total. 19 is good. That's pretty good. Um, so you could, you could kind of like take the ladder that's there and kind of like, you know, fit, fit pieces back into the, 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 the spools and kind of get it all put back together well enough that it, you're like, yep, yeah, that'll hold weight. Um, and so you put it up there. Um, who wants to go check it out? Hi, I'm right behind you, Elnats, if you're heading on up. Yeah, and, uh, I'll go gonna, on up. I'm, he said, before he go way up, he was like, uh, just to be safe, since we can't see what's up there, I'd go ahead and uh, uh, have a weapon ready. I'm going to climb up with my hatchet. So I've got my hatchet ready, yeah. It's a one-handed weapon, bad idea. so I could feel like I could probably... I don't yeah, know if it's it's all it requires two hands. but in, in that case, I think we should probably group up if you're thinking... Karu! Of... Hop on my back. Let's go. They have weapons. Ah, just to be safe. I'm not saying there's anything up there, but there's no reason to have to waste an action at the start of a combat to pull out your weapon. So. <laughs> <laughs> we are still missing two. Uh, Engork and uh, uh, Huang. We don't do, need... Would you like to call them over? Nah. <laughs> okay, I will do it then. <laughs> I, I, Jesus I Christ, hurry up. Let's get on my back. I cast a message and speak as, into both of their ears and tell them to come to the barn. As he's doing that, we climb up. Yeah, no, it's not It's not a very large area. It's a little loft. In the, yeah, in just the like barn. a little loft. Um, I'm not worried about it. So uh, so you kind of like go up there and look at it. it. You're apparently very worried about it. But uh, there's, there's uh, some hay bales very up here. Um, and it looks like one of the hay bales has like been taken apart and kind <laughs> of like threaded into like a makeshift like bed. Ooh, for like okay. a, it looks Good like kind of a, like a, a smallish bed, um, and uh, Can we it's, it's only about two. It's only about two feet long. Like it's not like a full size. Like, it, but it's like a little little bed. Um, and there's a few trinket. There's a few trinkets kind of littering in, in the nest. There are these these uh, small braids made out of white animal hair. Ah, oh my god. And then like there's a there's a doodle. like a little like a little like uh like a uh, chain link like doll looking thing that's <laughs> been made out of like the uh the uh, like doll. shoe nails. So like there's like the nails that go in the horse's uh -huh. shoes and they, they, it's bent them all together to make like little tiny chain link like links and like started like threading them together and it's just kind of like a like a start of a pattern. I go, Elnat, do you see that? Stay quiet." No. If Elnat, I imagine Elnat's... In, uh, Elnat, are you in front of me? I don't want to talk for your character, but that's how I pictured in my head that you were climbing up the ladder first and I was right behind you. I mean, yeah, I would climb up the ladder first, but, I mean, I'm sure it, like, we're probably looking yeah, around like right next, the loft in yeah, different yeah. Yeah, we're areas, like right so... I just go, yeah. Elnat, be quiet. And, uh... Um, I guess, actually, like, seeing those two things would trigger a, 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 a some sort of a check, right? Like a... Maybe a esoteric lore check, Brendan. Like, do I know what these things are? Like, does it like Austin thinks that it's like some sort of voodoo doll or something like that? But I don't know if uh, and seeing all you know, 
being who I am, like, do these artifacts scream anything to me? Like, are they obviously something? Well, the artifacts scream like at a, him. Like a plus six mm-hmm. on the esoteric. Actually, I guess it'd be a. Unless it's a haunt or something, it'd be a plus. If it's not, it's plus four. If it's a haunt, yeah, a creature, or a curse, it's plus six. But if it's not, it's plus four. But you feel like it's like on the tip of your tongue. You're like, this looks like something I've tongue. read about before, but I can't. Would it help if I rolled a twenty-six thievery check if I looked at it? What do you what do you want what do you want to look at? What is he looking at right now? <laughs> what well, with a thievery check, I don't know what, you would have to be looking for something specific. I don't think you're gonna Yeah. Like you I could probably... it's a doll that you're holding or whatever. Well, I always oh, see a doll at a distance, but I don't know if a thievery check's gonna help with the with a, okay. with a doll necessarily. If, like unless it's roll... a thieving doll. Could I roll a religion to identify Ooh. magic? I guess I have to be trained for that, right? Uh, religion. Um, I mean, if probably. religion would work, I can roll it. I'm very well trained in. I was trying to see religion. if I could do something that would identify magic, but. So I guess if it's a religious roll. magic, yeah. My nature identifies magic. Can I roll a nature roll? So I would say, so you guys already rolled an occultism check, like in the barn, kind of. Um, yeah. So I don't think you could find anything else out that way, probably. Yeah. I'm gonna so go like, to I it. can't learn more about the doll. Um, I mean, is... yeah, I don't think there's anything else to learn. It's just, it's just like a little, like a yeah. chain link thing made out of the the nails. Go up and well, investigate. I, I'm the... gonna make it into a keychain then. <laughs> so go up and investigate this hole. <laughs> is that the intruder is small but very strong? is ripping the hair out of that white horse to turn it into a doll. I, That's what it looks I, like. I, we're not close. It's a residence in the barn. Right? We haven't even gone to this hole yet, right? Like, we've just seen this at a distance? Like, a, like, if something was sleeping inside of this hay bale, we haven't seen it's, it no, yet, No, right? it's, like, open. It's open. There's, no, there's nothing else. There's nowhere anything oh. can hide. Okay, okay. I guess I was picturing I, like a I hate tunnel. To see, I hate to say it out loud because I hate to jinx us and make this reality, but mm-hmm. I think we might be working with a Feyan creature here. Because oh, they are small and pranksters and, and have the ability to fly and use yeah, all these I things. I, is, is there anything else up here that we should look for? Can I search around the rest of the, the room or does it really just seem like this hay bale with this for all intents and purposes, like nest is the really the only thing up of any sort of interest up here. Yeah, it kind of looks like that's all that you can you're gonna find up there. Um, cool. Obviously, you could you could uh, I think you guys got quite a bit of information from the barn. Um, there's maybe some more checks that you guys could make in the workshop um, to see if you can identify any magic in there. Um, but like you feel like you've gotten a lot of clues. But maybe that that in itself is not enough to just figure out, you know, exactly what this thing is. Could I up in this room since the ladder is like we put together the ladder, like we could probably assume that Ektar hasn't been up here to check things out, correct? Yeah. So maybe I could set some sort of a like like again, the only thing that's coming to my mind is a salt line, but like the equivalent of that with my sort of bag track, of yeah. esoteric goodies. Like I just got a bag of a bunch of random stuff throw something together that would maybe give us more information if it were to come back tonight, for instance. I I also am pretty suspicious of Ektar at this point because the mm-hmm. utter lack of investigation that he apparently has done where he's like, oh, this room was wrecked. Oh, this ladder was destroyed and I haven't been in the barn to look at it. Like, he's, I trust Ektar. I think he's just dumb. I, he, no, he's awfully suspicious right now. I mean, we shouldn't rule him out, but yes, I also think that he's probably also dumb. And so he did, and he gave you guys some information too. When you first walked up, he basically said that, you know, he mentioned the person that he bought it from, and said that they hadn't had any trouble like this. Yeah. And then he also mentioned that he tried to get help from his his family, right. and they refused to help him. Mm-hmm. Like he's like, you know, normally they all they're all about sticking anyway. sticking together and stuff, and he's, and he's just like, but they they literally won't even come out and look at it. That's yeah, but what, more significant. What's up with him? Yeah, like, why is it so significant? I bet there, maybe his fan, well, and we also maybe got a little bit of information, an idea from uh, old uh, Marky Mark the dragon that he's like, maybe it could be a grudge. So maybe, yeah, exactly. maybe his family has a grudge because he got the farm instead of them. 
and they know that they they've sent some sort of a goblin or something to fuck with his farm and they know that but that's why they're not going to help him try to figure it out or something along those lines is maybe uh the the, the, the lines up. that uh Wakroon is drawing so i think uh so you guys are kind of like most of you are, went into the barn and kind of investigating this, this thing uh-huh. and then you hear you hear ektar yelling outside he's like what in the tarnation and then you hear all of the Ogdenars like kind of like whinnying and screaming and like all of a sudden stomping around and and kind of like running around in a circle. Um, and we will pick up here next week with what we oh, see outside. Ah, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> very nice, very nice. All it's, right, it's just like in CIS. Just, like <laughs> just, just the same as in CIS. All right, mm-hmm. thanks for hanging out, stream. If you came back to watch these extra fifteen minutes, I appreciate you. You uh, real I'll one. try to not have my power go out next time. I guess I don't know, but uh, anyways, uh, till next time. I hope we'll play next Wednesday, the 29th, tentatively. Tentatively. Maybe. Yep. About it. All right. Sounds good. Ta-ta. Be good. Bye YouTube. Bye Twitch. Thanks everybody.